All right. Um, well, we are all present. It's 6 p.m. So I would like to call to order the Concord School Committee. Welcome, everybody. It'll be about 630 because Concord's meeting before First. the region. So I don't know. It's got it's been Okay. Juggling it. Or, no, probably our bad, Andrew. Yeah. <laughs> or you, right. can, you can hang out back You're there. welcome you to can, stay and just stay listen, and but we'll you don't have to stay at the table. When it's time. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Uh, Sorry, Andrew. Sorry. Um, all right. So we will start with public comment. There, I did that. Did you? Care, like Carrie's on Zoom. Oh, sorry. We, oh, we have to roll call in because Carrie's on Zoom. Um, so I will start. Anderson present. Present. Murano present. Rankin present. Rankin present. Um, next, we'll move to public comment. We don't have anyone here with us this evening. Not a surprise, given that it's a busy week. Um, and I do see some folks on Zoom in the audience. If you could raise your hand, if you have interest in chit-chatting with us this evening or making public comment, seeing okay. none. Um, I will move to our CPS capital plan. Um, I don't have a tremendous amount to say on this. This is more something that I'm going to look to Bob and Lori to take us through. Um, so I'll turn it over to you guys. Sure. Just make sure that's I'm just call it up on screen here. Aaron can pull it up. Aaron, can you call it up on screen? Maybe increase the magnification. <laughs> okay, so thank you. So I'm going to start uh, kind of walking through FY24, which is the um, coming up quickest. Um, the, um, the items we have on here, um, one of them we added, loading dock repairs at the row um, and talking to our facilities manager, Russ Hughes, and looking at pictures of the place. It's deteriorated, and this is something we need to do in part for safety and part for not uh, damaging items that we receive there. Um, at cost estimates, $1,000. Something we feel uh, is important near-term fix, uh, just large enough that it's better to, to use capital for. Um, we've had uh, conversations with uh, the community in the Thoreau area, and we've allocated twenty-five thousand um, for the um, for the master plan. Um, these were um, previously allocated to carpet and tile replacement. Uh, we've made some progress on the carpet and tile replacement elementary school building, so we're going to uh, skip that in 24 and, and reinstitute it in 25. Can I just add to that? Sure. Why don't we give you this one, and Alex and I will share. Right. Yeah. Um, certainly the community gave us feedback, but we had our own needs ahead of that to be named with the fire and um, playground needs and ongoing parking discussions and... Uh, an inability to just keep it the way we would normally want to keep it. It was time for a big picture. Look, we, we don't want to do things in piecemeal. The parking plan is temporary. We're doing a bit of a playground, not a whole playground that'll go in in the spring. Um, and there's just a need for an overall plan to be developed. So we're not missing an opportunity or preventing an opportunity by making decisions in isolation. So that's the need for the big picture plan. The next two items are the uh, $50,000 reserves at Peabody and Sanborn for health and safety. Uh, those are for both uh, 24 and 25. And when a new building comes online, we'll uh, sunset those and redirect that capital elsewhere. Um, and then the, the large item is the, um, the Ripley HVAC upgrades. Um, and this is 745,000. This is uh, the allocation that we need to complete the work. Um, you may recall that $300,000 was redirected last year from Alpha and Gordon's work here. Um, the 300 was a um, just a number that was available. It wasn't necessarily representative of the cost of the work. Um, and when um, 
this went out to, to bid, it turned out the cost was 1.2 million. Uh, a significant chunk of the difference is that um, the amperage, the electrical service in the building needed to be increased from 800 to 1200. Uh, and that's a big chunk of the difference. Um, there's also some supply issues with the conduit and the materials that um, the uh, consultants we worked with thought there was a bit of a spike at the time. Um, there's no guarantees that it uh, comes down, um, but it's not expected to rise. But the combination of the 300,000 from last year and the 745 gives us a million 45. Um, with the 1.2 million quote we have, we have a $100,000 green community uh, grant that would cover 100,000. It's already been committed, and um, we anticipate one to 200,000 in rebates from National Grid for um, the fact that we'd be, since we use gas here and we'd no longer be using that, we'd um, be able to work for some rebates to estimate one to 200,000. So doing this would enable us to move forward with the Ripley work, um, it, provide the electrical service we need to the building, uh, and provide the, um, um, the heat pump sources at um, the two, the four uh, modules, pods, uh, two for you know, our preschool and two for um, the ones that the Concord Children's Center will be vacated. And that's our first pass at uh, moving towards um, uh, kind of retrofitting the building to sustainable. And um, that's kind of our big capital item for next year. The future years, uh, as you know, things change. Um, so we've allocated dollars for future years. Um, I can uh, kind of go over these at a high level. One thing I would have wanted to comment on in the elementary is we do have our first group that's going to be coming off the warranty in FY27-28. So we, we felt like we needed to allocate some money for roof repairs, which can be significant. Um, we do have ERU replacements as well at, at the elementary. Um, scroll down. Um, we have at Alcock sidewalk repairs and parking lot repairs, about 50,000 each. Um, in the big scheme of things relatively minor. Um, we've left the high efficiency condensing boiler in uh, for now. Um, as you know, we're looking at um, feasibility study for Alcox that will um, inform us as to um, what our options are for a sustainable net near zero or net zero building. But in the meantime, you know, we felt that um, we're going to have a need here and you know, we need to put something into it to cover HVAC. Um, there are other items on here that are minor, more minor in scope. Um, I will also add that you know, in the FY23 capital, we do anticipate some savings on the parking lot work. Um, and um, on the carpeting in the building, we had a state contractor that came in at less than expected price. Um, so those are uh, two positives we have in FY23 capital. So that's the, um, the high level um, overview. I hope that's uh, helpful. So any questions? Any comments, questions? Uh, when does the school committee need to move recommendation forward? Do we have a date for that? Yeah, this would be part of the warrant deadlines of January 4th. January 3rd, 4th. Yeah. 4th. Um, do you anticipate the, uh, the thorough? For the boiler that we're going to um, repeat our all time. Um, I think uh, personally, and I don't, we didn't really talk about this in great depth, but for now it's a placeholder while we wait for the Alcop piece to come back, dissect and um, digest everything that comes there and start to talk about what we do next. I expect you're going to revisit that and decide what to do. We. I, I, just naming the need seems really smart. Good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> to know. Court, can you speak into a microphone? I'm having a really hard time hearing you. Sorry. Does my microphone reach you? 
now? Yeah, quiet? you're 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 quiet. You're pretty quiet, but I, I can hear you. This microphone. Do we have a, um? There, there's not that no, round. This thing. should be should taking be care of the sound. Yeah. At any rate, um, my my question was simply uh, because we went down the path of all time and we can anticipate that that could occur again. We're going to get data to inform this decision. Yeah, you know, Ripley's turned Ripley's into a little process. pilot project, sort of not knowing what we didn't know. And to do just even the section of the building we're talking about is over a million dollars in electrical upgrades. So I think it does give us some predictive factor towards Alcott throw, whichever school we're going to talk about. But yes, there's certainly more to talk about when we get that study back. Yeah, and we don't have it back at this point in time. We don't have it. We, we've had promises with consultants, but we don't have dollars to go with, or they have more research to do. Um, so it's too early for us to, I think, make any adjustments or any uh, recommendations here about capital plan. And it, we don't know what the scope of dollars would be either. We have 900,000. So that's a, it's a secondary conversation that could happen. Is what if they come back and say that it would cost uh, more than we um, can allocate to it? Yeah, and, right. and that's a, right. it's a different discussion. We, the school community here can't necessarily solve that. You're looking at some carryover for fiscal 22. Uh, to the tune of the number you just gave us, uh, yeah, 300,000. Um, is the rest of it already committed? The rest of it is committed. Uh, that includes work that we're doing on the carpet replacement here, includes uh, parking lot work, um, includes the Thoreau ERU. Um, okay. So town treasurer should expect to close that part of it out probably this fiscal year, the last fiscal year. We'll want to move forward. Um, yeah, we we often have monies that fall yeah, into another money. fiscal year, Which just the duration of the projects. Time. Yeah, we're, yeah, we track it and then they sync up with the town funds. Okay. Yeah. All right, thank you. All right, so I imagine we'll be talking about this again. Oh, sorry, Cynthia. Yeah. Um, could you give us a little more of a timeline on the rest of the town for, you know, um, so we talked to them today. Uh, we're going to be uh, meeting with them again after the break in two weeks. Um, they're looking into um, three, they talked about three technologies. I won't go too far into it now, other than to say uh, one of them um, was something they felt like they needed to do significantly more research on. They uh, learned some capabilities that uh, might be an option. Um, and um, Hopefully they can get, they need to contact a manufacturer and do some research. Um, I also asked that if they uh, find, you know, can they find another school that is using the technology the way they're proposing? It would be nice to have a reference and we're not, I don't mind being leading edge, but we don't want to be bleeding edge. Um, so, um, yeah, I would say um, we told them we would like it sooner, but we also don't, we want them to give us the right answer. So we're pushing them. Um, we were hoping to have some a, a report from them, preliminary report in December. Um, but at this point, we need to do a little bit more work. Um, and then in terms of the work, uh, the RFP that we're going out for the row, um, do we know the scope of that RFP? Because I'm hearing it's not playground equipment. So there's been, there's nothing decided yet. That's for you to consider is our suggestion of a master planning process at the row. So that would be something, the scope would have to be decided among the committee. We'll give you certainly ideas and suggestions with parking and fields that need upgrading and other things, but that'll be something you help us put together and then we'll, Bob's office will do the writing. And then just in terms of nature work at the school, the elementary schools, has there been any significant work done on the outside of Alcott? There hasn't been as of recently, but we can loop back to that. I. Definitely feel Thoreau is the stronger need. Uh -huh. yeah. 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 The yeah. Alcott playground is small compared to. It is. Yeah. But Thoreau's story is they have Alcott's hand me downs from when that got put in. Oh, is that true? Yes. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. They have the old so, so we'll we'll go to Thoreau first and then loop around to the others. Yeah. <laughs> and there's a capital work being done to irrigate at, at Willard as well. So Willard is at the route. 
Uh, no, oh, Willard's, Willard oh, had an yeah, yeah. irrigation on the fields, which we're finally getting to the last phase of. So. All right, some more to come. Cynthia Moore? No. Oh, okay. Trace? No, I'm good. All right. Thank you, Karen. Um, oh, Carrie. I don't need to forget you. No, I'm. I'll. I'll. I'll pipe. Pipe up if I have something. I don't have any questions on this. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Thank you. Thanks, Bob. Thanks, Lori. Um, more to come on that. Um, next, we'll get into um, our CMSBC discussion. Uh, I think we should just probably start out with a recap of um, all the flurry of information that's been going on. Um, I think the, the, the big picture things that I think are really important, um, I think we all know them, but nonetheless, um, the school building committee and finance committee recommended a not to exceed warrant of 115 million for town meeting select board in their October 28th meeting, put, um, a warrant for 110, uh, 110 million. Good news on November 17th, the finance committee did vote affirmative action um, on the article. So, um, you know, obviously they support it, which is always helpful when we have all of our committees um, aligned. On that same day, the 17th, the building committee met and we talked about pursuing two different strategies. One is a strategy of what's called ad alternates, which essentially is um, a strategy where you would seek to compile a list of building components that could be added in the event you got an estimate or eventually a bid that was underneath um, your proposed budget. There's an alternative strategy, which is a deduct alternate strategy, which says, you know what, we're going to put the building forth as is, and we're going to compile a similar list, but of things that we would take out. Um, and that list is um, in a very specific predetermined order um, should the estimates come in over budget. Uh, our professionals advise that a deduct alternate strategy for various reasons is is preferable. So the building committee is going to pursue that strategy of compiling a very prescribed and ordered list of components of the building that could be cut should our estimates or eventually our bids come in over the 110 million. Um, so that work will commence at their December 15th meeting. Court and I will be. Um, so that is sort of the oh, the general update of sort of the state of affairs. Do you have anything else to add? The, the recap, if you will. Not on that part. Yeah. Um, on solar, I do. Okay. Um, I continue at the building committee meetings to uh, stress the need to uh, push forward the coordination between the building committee in town and the light plant. Um, because we have a uh, project uh, that is independent, but inseparable, and that is the uh, solar generation. We're going to have a net zero ready school, but it's going to produce no power. Um, the uh, earlier number I heard was maybe 10 million uh, coming from the light plant. More recently, what we've heard is it's going to be about 5 million for the uh, PV panels themselves whether that includes all the steel to uh, support them in the parking lot, I'm not quite sure. We know it's rooftop. We know that uh, the latest plan we saw from Solar Designs calls for not only satisfying the school needs, but uh, considerably more. Uh, so I think that's the quid pro quo, so to speak, that we're going to make with the light plant is to uh, get all of this help, which is uh, so, so essential. And in return, we're going to uh, put more solar on it than that school needs. So to the tune of about 150% uh, school capacity. Um, one of the reasons I think that we need to work tight coordination is because we've got multiple jurisdictions and they've got to come together. And uh, we have a 2015 town meeting vote that puts all solar under the uh, jurisdiction of the town manager. So we now have the town manager and the building committee and the light plant, all of which have to be coordinated. Um, so I think we have uh, 
Yeah, and actually at our work, chair's we breakfast. Have work to do here. Yeah, at our chair's breakfast on well, last Wednesday, Sweet. maybe, um, we did bring up uh, some of the deadlines that we're seeking um, at the building committee, you know, just the warrant and and, and certain things like that with um, Brian Fold. So he was um, eager to get back the light plant to talk about some of the approaching deadlines that we have. Which I think Dave would try to share, did share out on at the last building committee meeting. He was yes. on the meeting and yes, at the end. gave us, everyone an update I about that. I don't know. I don't remember. So dates. Share I, those I, I, those I, those were um, sure. Yeah, I can find that out. Um, and then next one, um, one thing I wanted to throw out to everybody. <clears throat> so at our meeting on the 17th, we um, haphazardly kind of uncovered that the select board set a ballot vote. So everybody knows you have a town meeting vote and then a subsequent ballot vote um, for uh, the town meeting warrant article during February school vacation week. And I was thinking it could be nice of us to do sort of two things. One, maybe sort of, you know, a letter from the chair to their chair saying that um, we would you know, re request them to consider changing the date. And then just also saying, just because again, I like, I like when people are aligned saying, and if you do change it, we, we support and back you on that decision. So I had thought about um, writing such a letter um, just to, again, to give them support. Um, should they, should they take undertake that? And um, before I did that, I just wanted to get a quick poll about what the temperature was here. Uh, I'm not opposed. Uh, I do think it's important that people know that uh, that date was uh, something that apparently was determined uh, because of the special town meeting vote, and then they just rolled forward. So I think yeah. everybody uh, can own some responsibility. Yeah, they just looked at the first available date. I mean, everybody needs to be we, we, we oh, yeah, no, sure. everybody missed it. Oh, yeah. I want everybody to know that uh, the select board was not uh, deficient in, in any way, more so than, than I was or you were. Mm -hmm. um, and I think we uh, have every confidence that the, uh, the chairman is uh, going to bring us to the it's select the board next Monday. Yeah, to, to yeah. confirm the date. I think, I think it's a fate accompli at this point. This is the language of the warrant and to confirm the date, yeah. So, so yeah, I don't know. I, I was thinking if, if everyone could just show a quick show of hands, if you guys wouldn't mind. Yeah, I think, I think you could say we appreciate their yeah, attention to this. Leave it at that. We don't need yeah, to. Just saying we'll support you. you. Should you change it? Yeah. yeah. All right, great. Um, and then finally, um, <clears throat> this was just an idea I had sort of born out of um, – the, the fact that we, you know, are just getting around eight years later and on the region to paving the ring road, um, thinking about as we pursue this deduct alternate strategy at the building committee, you know, at the conclusion of our December 15th meeting, I think we will have a list that will have a number attached to it. You know, whether it's one million, two million, three million, I don't know, of things that we might um we would consider removing from the building should the bids come in over budget or the estimates. Um, and I keep thinking about how a lot of the things that, that could and likely will get peeled off will be, you know, more deferments of costs rather than actual cost savings. Cause it's, you know, I think we've exhausted some of those um, savings, like the true savings where we've cut, um, I don't remember the final number, but um, two, three, four, something like that million. I don't remember what the number is. I apologize. Um, you know, so that we don't leave future school committees hanging with two things. One, um, having to get this these projects passed. And two, I keep thinking about is the financially responsible thing to ensure that they're done sooner rather than later. Um you know, and I, I even go back to thinking about um, we had that facilities fees discussion at the regions that, you know, I forget in 2000, 2020. Oh, you know, we're going to we can look at um, bathrooms for uh, the 
high school. I think that estimate was like a million bucks back then. I'm wondering that what that would be now. My guess is it wouldn't be a million dollars. So I'm wondering if there's some responsibility on our part to think about this. You know, we are not asking for um, any tier two, tier three, bigger projects, but would this be something? And, and certainly not something we would use for fun, but just in the event of the scenario where the budget comes over or the bids come over um, to prevent future school committees from being sort of saddled with this work. Um, it's certainly not something we would vote on tonight, but I thought it could be up for discussion. Um, again, just another thing I wanted to get people's temperature on. So uh, I did confirm recently that the Green Road is not the third part of the high school project. It was never all right, so well, then the is, facilities fees, you know, there are other things. It's, it's a good example. It's just not a factual one. There are, there are other examples. Finishing out the ice that we've come to own as regional school. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Well, maybe not yet, but I mean, I mean, we're going to have to look at the facilities feed. We're not in compliance with code. Um, but that, was, that was because we took the bathrooms out as part of the CCFA plan. Regardless, yeah. but so what I'm saying is, but, but, but okay. So so maybe the example is poor. The sentiment is the same. We're basically putting we're putting a scenario where we're, we're doing deferred costs rather than actual savings. So as you heard, a lot of people uh, suggested the biggest cost is the fields, right? I'm sorry, the fields in the year. I think so. That's yeah, like so the, we could do that with CPA over a multi year project. Well, yeah, we 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 heard that up on oh, no. Thursday. Yeah, we don't know that we would get that money. We can certainly try, you know, try to. And and again, I, I'm just saying having a fail safe option, not to not pursue other things, but in the event that things didn't come to fruition, we would yeah. have a backup plan. You were at the FinCom, right? You saw the, the lower debt that's going like this. Yeah, yeah, and the town has many dire needs. Yeah, and, but that's why we're not chatting about it. Right. But I mean, I think the building committee needs to do the work, try to make things not off the lease. There should be part of the project. You know? Alexa, where we've been confused is uh, even absent a conversation tonight, if the uh, old deletes allow us to proceed with the project. And if some of those deletes are unacceptable to this school committee. Doesn't it fall upon us to solve it in any event? And is it premature to solve it tonight? Oh, certainly we're not doing anything tonight. I'm just saying for the warrant. But again, I just think you have an opportunity to capitalize on known costs today versus unknown costs at a later date. And is that responsible? I, you know, that, that's all I'm thinking. So you're saying like field specifically? Well, no, we don't have that deduct alternate list yet. list yet. So it would, you know, it would, I think we know the fields are coming on. <laughs> right, right. But, and um, every but school, yeah. you know, should be built with fields. I think we're all in agreement of that. And so this is just a way to think outside, should this happen and should it get deduct altered out of it, then we want a backup plan. Let me, let me speak to that for a minute, if I may. Sure. Let's talk more generally about alt deletes first and then fields more specifically second. All the leads first, uh, Alexa and I and Lori, the members of the committee, voting members of the committee, have been asked to submit our ideas for a possible all deletes by December 7th. So I think it's contingent upon uh, everybody on the Concord School Committee to share with uh, the three of us what you think needs to uh, be, be considered. Yeah, sure. Um, in terms of the CPC, uh, nobody can speak for the CPC, but we can learn their sentiments because they want to have dialogue with uh, potential applicants. And they want to uh, give people some sense of what's realistic, what's not. Um, what we do know is that uh, the last week they had to deal with unexpended money. Uh, what we have heard on the street multiple times is they don't have enough applications to uh, satisfy the available budget. So this could uh, suggest to us that we might be in a, uh, a very, very fortunate timing. Um, and I think the, uh, the sentiments of the uh, CPC committee would be uh, uh, favor favorable. But again, that's, yeah. that's an opinion. Right. Yeah, yeah, no, but I think you're probably right. But 
Again, I'm just thinking backup plans for backup plans for backup plans. And I would go further and say uh, something that was uh, not ever deleted, just was never in the project, to my knowledge, was irrigation for those fields. Um, and uh, even before uh, adverse climate impacts on our fields, um, I think irrigation was, was a good idea for heavily used fields like that. So. This is an opportunity perhaps to backfill that uh, that potential problem so carrie do you have anything yeah i um so i thought about i've thought about this a lot and i i you know first first of all i understand that this is like the such a massive undertaking building this school and it's the biggest capital project that our town has taken on um and just having watched it over the last couple of years it's amazing to see all of these committees and the administration and everybody involved, parents, families, community members, um, everybody around voicing their opinion on, on how this should go. Um, and I'm just, I, I, I'm just really grateful for the process and I'm grateful to, to everyone involved, um, court and Alexa, you too, Dr. Hunter. Um, and I, I know that there has not always been agreement on how we move it cross the finish line. Um, and nor should there be, this is a massive undertaking, but I think we're at the point now where, um, we're, we're cut, we're looking at make, cutting crucial aspects of the building. Like, you know, like we're talking about the fields, but also like building a gym without seats. I mean, these are things in my mind that we know to Alexa's point, like we know we're going to need down the road. We're not going to, we're not going to in the long term have a gym that doesn't have bleachers or have some type of seating. So we're just deferring the cost, which only increases the cost of the building in the long run. Um, and I also understand that there are, I mean, the town manager presented to us all of the needs of the town. I understand that this is a massive, you know, a massive project and it's um, taking a lot of funding away from other, other pro projects potentially. But the, where I land is we are, we are committed. We all know we need a new middle school. There has never been a question about that. And the building, um, I, it doesn't seem to be at all extravagant, um, but just a, a really good building for that will serve our community and our kids for the next 50 years. So my feeling is it would be, you know, it's the responsible choice is to actually think about what, in this conversation, um, what are the, the, um, this conversation and future conversations, but what are the projects that are simply deferred expenses and, and tackle them now, because, um, it's only going to get more expensive down the road. I think we have the, the chance now to do the building right. And we ought to take advantage of that moment. Thanks. Karen. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to throw it out there for tonight. It's obviously not something we're making a decision on, but I just wanted to sort of, I don't know, socialize the idea just so that we had a, at least a preliminary discussion on it. We can see what happens on the 15th with the building committee. And then we only do have one opportunity after the December 15th meeting for us in this group to meet again, really before the warrant closes. So again, I, I, you know, I don't know where I land on it, but it's just, I think it's responsible to, to talk about it if it's a viable idea and if it would be, you know, again, the sort of financially prudent thing to do. Um, so with that, I don't adjourn us though. So with that, I would invite our Carlisle members to join us, I guess. So we can open our Carlisle meeting. Thank you guys. Welcome, everybody. Hi, guys. And we, yeah, is everybody there? So I am going to call the Carver Carlisle Regional School Committee to order. And I do think we have to just call us by roll call because we have Carrie, who is on Zoom. And just for the minutes, Erin uh, Ayesha is also on Zoom and Domingos is in the room. So um, if we can roll call. Anderson present. Who's present? Morano present. Ready present. Rankin present. We got Sharon in there. Yeah. Right. Okay. <laughs>
<laughs> All right. So welcome, everybody. We are going to open up with public comment. So I will start in the room. And if you have a public comment, if you could join us at the table and we'll put you on a microphone. I see no one in the room. And so in our Zoom audience, if you have a public comment to make, if you can use the raise hand feature. And I do not see any public comment, so we will move on. And on to our student reps who are with us. I see Felicity's here and Harry's here. And I don't see Zaria, but welcome. Hi, uh, yeah. Unfortunately, Zaria said that she couldn't make it tonight. She ended up having a last minute conflict, but she's definitely going to be with us next time. Um, so Felicity and I have a bit of a quicker update. Um, the first thing is just obviously there's been a lot of school spirit in the days right before break. Um, we have a photo of this later, but all the like clubs and various activities and things are all decorating windows in the cafeteria or learning commons. Um, the powder puff game tonight was tonight. So it's basically a football game between the class of junior girls and the class of senior girls. And and the like varsity football boys get to coach it so it's really fun even if you're not playing it's fun to watch a lot of people go just to like show their support for their grade you know just always fun to have like all school events like that and then tomorrow we have our first spirit assembly since 2019 um and that's something that senate has been working really hard to plan it's actually like built into the schedule for the day so we'll have our first couple of periods and then go into the assembly so that should be really exciting and it's like our first one, as I said, in almost four years, I've never had one and Felicity's never had one. So it's going to be new for almost like three quarters of the school. So that's always exciting. Yeah. So in addition to working on this spirit week stuff, Senate has also been um, doing like the district strategic we held the envisioning session for that. Um, so that was also we had almost 40 participants and it was really great because we got to hear lots of diverse student perspectives on like developing the um, on input for helping develop the district's plan for the next couple of years um, from what students wanted. And it was nice to hear that, like there's a lot of focus on things like students want more focus on mental health, for example. And then there was also some interesting things. Like some people said there was one person who said that they wanted um, Greek salad to be offered as a lunch again. So there's some other interesting <laughs> points like that, but yeah, it was really great to have that conversation with lots of different students. For sure. Yeah. And we're working over like the next couple of days too, to kind of comb through everything we got a little bit. We're going to put together a summary and stuff like that. So we just want to make sure it's as accessible as possible. Yeah, there were definitely a, a couple of points that came up in like every one of the little like groups that we split off into. Um, also, quarter one ended on, I think it was Friday the 11th. So students have gotten their first grades of the year back. So we're definitely like very much in the swing of things now. And yeah, only a couple months till midterms, which is kind of scary, but. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then we were realizing we haven't actually met since the fall sports season ended, but the Monday after break winter sports are starting. So that's something to look forward to. It's going to run until March this year. And then Felicity, if you want to touch on the concerts. Yeah. So we had um, a chorus concert on November 2nd and also a band orchestra concert on November 10th. And, that, and both of those went really well. We also had um, senior district auditions this past Saturday. Um, and that went really well for a lot of people. There were a lot of acceptances and we even got um, a number of all state recommendations. So that was just a testament to like the talent um, in the performing arts that the student body is, yeah, <laughs> that the student body has. Yeah. Um, and this isn't on the slideshow, but we also, as like student senate, just approved a couple of new clubs since we last met. Um, we now have a fishing club, a chamber music club, um, a club that's like kind of working to set up some tutoring. So lots of great stuff there. And then we just thought we'd include some photos. You can see some of the windows in this one, so some of the decorations we've been doing. And then um, actually in the cafeteria, a couple of days ago, Reverb, which is one of the like performing arts clubs at the school did a performance in the cafeteria during lunch. So that was really cool. And this is just a photo of powder puff. You could see some of the senior class and their pink shirts and everything. So yeah, all in all, I think it's been a good month, lots of things going on and the school definitely seems to be feeling pretty lively. That's great. And I think lots of school spirit this year. I have to say, Felicity, we have not seen you since the play. So congratulations. It was Thank awesome. You. 
And she, what she didn't tell us is she was also the musical director of the play. And so this is the first time I've seen like a fall drama that actually had some music in it. So it was really, really exceptional. It was definitely a little bit, I won't say, um, it was, it was, it was dark, (laughs) it was dark, (laughs) Uh, but it was also really funny. And I was in the audience on opening (laughs) night and there was somebody that was laughing really loud and it was like an old school laugh track that kept on going on. So it was actually really entertaining. So excellent job on that. And, and even with all the sports, Harry, I know I saw you on the Hill at soccer and it was, you know, soccer made it pretty far in the tournament. So all of our teams have gone pretty far, which is great. And we're looking forward to a Thanksgiving day football game. So, yeah, for sure. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Happy Thanksgiving. Right. You too. All right. <laughs> so, moving on, we have Andrea Gillis with us for Lifeguards and Recognition. So, we can just grab a chair and a microphone. Cynthia, can she just borrow your microphone and maybe we'll just grab that chair? Um, mm. would you- yeah, Aaron's going to do the slides. Oh, Aaron's, Aaron's going to do, do the, the slides. slides. Okay. But, okay. Yeah, sure. I don't know from a microphone perspective. Does that, that might be the or trend. Mm, you might have to, yeah, we're on Zoom. You might have to, do you mind sitting in front of the microphone? Okay. Why don't we put you right at the end? Thank you. Thanks, Cynthia. <laughs> well, hi, everyone. Thank you so much for Welcome. having me here tonight. Um. Yeah, I was so when Kristen had asked me to join because this is actually our 15th year of this course. And the last time I was at a school committee meeting was when I was presenting my staff award. Oh, so man. I'm coming full oh, circle yeah. meeting now. Kristen is my immediate supervisor at CC. So she I invited her to come and watch my like one of my lifeguard classes. And that particular class has just a bunch of characters in it. I'll point out a few in them. <laughs> um, if you want to, um, so it, was a, it was a great class to, to know if I've been observing great teaching for 20 years. My first time in the pool. Mm. <laughs> yeah. I uh, happy to have you. <laughs> um, so um, do you want to advance? If you want to advance, Erin is behind the scenes at home. You can just say next slide, Erin, okay. and she'll advance it for you. Okay, thank you. So this is the timeline of the course that was developed. So, um, um, and I'm in disagreement with Peter Atlas regarding the last step of the at DCHS, because I actually was the last mm. step, <laughs> but that's okay. So that was in 2005, and we started our classes in 2008 at the Peak Center. And because I've been here for so long, I was actually in the initial meeting to create and discuss the development of the Peak Center. So um, it was nice for me to, be able to also have that time to do the work to create the course. We had other courses at the time, but this one particular course has outlived and is able um, logistically to facilitate, facilitate by the center and so on. So we have right now four grade 10 classes and I offered a grade 10. And when there's a, a, long, a high enough sign up for grade 11, 12, I'll have that in second semester, which I haven't offered in a few years because the numbers have been too low to warrant my my time in teaching to go towards those classes. So we have four grade 10 classes that grade because one of the requirements of students have to be 15 to take the class, 16 in Massachusetts actually work as a lifeguard. And many of our guards do work as a lifeguard. So we even continued through 2020 in our hybrid schedule, which you'll see a picture of it. It just, it was a lot of fun, but it was kind of silly. Um, but with the support of uh, the school allowing me to budget for an aquatic mannequin, it made it happen. So it was uh, it was a good experience for everyone. So that's uh, approximate number of how many students who have been certified and or recertified because I also utilize our mid-year exam week to bring back the current seniors who were my sophomores um, two years ago and recertify them. So um, again, it's it just a to provide our communities with certified lifeguards. And right now, in the last few years, has been a huge shortage. So I know that they are active and working. Um, next slide, please. Can you move it up? Thank yeah. you. So this is just what the Red Cross puts out. So this is a, um, a national course. So anyone that goes through the Red Cross here or in any other state, it's the same course that they're required to take. 
I, I tell my students every year, my first time getting lifeguard certified, I was where you were, I was at age, and I have been lifeguard certified, you know, but since then. You know, they're, they're just nice enough that they don't say, how long is that mistake? <laughs> <laughs> so they get trained in the rescue skills of the baby center, then we go back to the pool, we do our CPR and first aid. And um, their certifications come to fruition in January. In some cases, you turn 16 early, may start working. I know the Beach Center at this moment is uh, in dire need of lifeguards. So, you know, they, they know the uh, product director, it's, it's Mary Hong at this point, will come in and speak to the kids and just put a pitch in, they're interested and so on. And, and some would love the experience. And then that helps them in their pursuit in the summer. Because other recreations. Hmm. Next slide, please. So here are all the different places that I'm aware of that our lifeguards have worked at. We're all over the place. Uh, one of my students last year actually worked at State Camp in Canada. She was a little citizen. So they're, they're everywhere and they are greatly needed, and I hope that they are well prepared. I hear good things from the aquatic directors that they are, that they've been good employees, and so on. So this course, it, it's been, I feel fortunate to be able to teach it because it is elective at, at grade 10, and then if we run at 11, 12. So students not only have to have a high enough swim level and skill in that, and in terms of Red Cross, that equates to approximately, approximately a level four swimmer, they also have to have the discipline to be able to leave CC, just come to the pool, get ready, get in the pool, do their thing, go and change, and make it back to school for the next class. So I tell them right from the start, you know, many of you might have this, this the swim level and the skill, but you know, you really want this. This is something that you really are willing to dedicate yourself and stay with because you could just stay at the school and just change in the locker room, take it to the gym. And, and have a much easier day of it. And so the ones that say, and clearly most of them do, it's, um, it's a great opportunity. I love teaching it and think it's a very best of fun. Next slide, please. <clears throat> so these are some of the things that they must do in order to pass. It's a semester long class, so we take a, about a quarter and a half um, at school because our practice sessions are approximately 30 minutes, sometimes 35 if they could get over there early, or if it's a uh, beginning of the, class, of the day block like A or an end of the day block like H, then they can stay a little bit longer. I know who has to take a bus and who has to uh, get back to the school for athletic competitions or another club or activity. So you stay as long as you can, but it works out to be about 30, 35 minutes of actual practice time. And then there's the academic component to it. So, they could take this class, and the BD Center right now is offering a free lifeguard class because they're in such dire need. But prior to that, the class was costly, and I'm not sure that any 15 year old up to the challenge to just follow along with the online blended learning and then show up and do the skills. So I, you know, again, I like the way that I, I just spread the class out over the semester, so it brings the kids along at a natural pace for them, sophomores. And they're learning and um, they do well. So, in our first test, many of them had to retake it and that's fine, that's part of the process. They took it, 8%, they're still on track and certification. So, uh, so far, so good. I've had a few kids who came to the class who did not have the right or the higher level of swim ability, and I gave them the opportunity if you want to stay in audit the class, if you want to work a little harder outside of class and stay with me. And, and, um, I think two chose not to, and three chose to stay, and those three are working towards getting certified. And they are putting in extra work. One's a member there, and I'm doing swim school elsewhere, and, and they're working it because that's what they want to, they want to get certified. Um, so yeah, so those are the requirements. Next slide, please. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> that was our hybrid learning. So the kids had to wear masks in the water, and then when they went under, the yeah. they could take the mask off. And then they came up and put the soggy mask back on. Mm -hmm. And this was our mannequin and stimulates. <laughs> Sounds <laughs> awful. <laughs> and you know, most of the kids in the class don't weigh nearly 150 pounds, and the the shoulder joints just don't work. Yeah. So it's yeah. a little hard. So 
This student is actually holding the victim up to allow another student to come in and make a rescue because it's, it's, it's just, yeah. Yeah, they did it, they were good, everyone accepted it, um, and we got through it. That's probably <laughs> the best I can say about it. And I don't know, they have two mannequins that are just sitting in a back closet now at the center. I'm not sure what's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> but they're there in case, in case something else comes up, I guess. So that was a uh, class from 2020. Next slide. And then this particular class was last year. And um, this class developed a team share. Mm -hmm. uh, save lives on three and then each year. And, and I won't point out anyone in particular, but it's a very diverse group, learning style wise, as well as um, swim ability wise. And they just came together amazing. I had a student here that was a senior, and I was asked if he could join the class, and he did. The student had many learning challenges. And the kids just welcomed him in. It was a wonderful experience. And, it's, and you look at this crowd, and you could never see one kid that doesn't belong there because they were they were just tremendous class. So they are in the therapy pool, which is pretty warm. They're very <laughs> happy doing it last year. <laughs> Next slide. Okay, so the the next steps. I'm I'm hoping to be able to get to my next level of certification so that I can then certify another health and fitness teacher. That would, that would be something that um, I would love to be for our communities to be able to do this course. Um, so I'm working. So, and I have, I'm, I'm working on the people that I work with too. <laughs> <laughs> and then hopefully it'll all come together when uh, my time comes to HCC. And that would be a goal. Not many places, not many physical education programs are able to have a product program. Don't have the facility or yeah. how do you fit it in the time and so on. Not to mention ours is across campus. Right. You know, mm -hmm. so it's working. And I think did I add a couple more slides here? Yeah, we're getting close. Yeah. I'm not sure of my my latest one, but I no. All right, well, I had a couple of slides for my current class, and they were, and they heard that what I was doing, they were insisting on that. that, that <laughs> <laughs> we'll be sure to send them to the committee. One <laughs> <laughs> reason I asked him to present to you today is uh, because the leadership team at the high school, all the department chairs, has a tradition of sharing good news. And there was some point last spring where Andrea kind of won the good news sharing because. One of the students that you had trained actually that week had saved her life. She was working at the pool on him for the abort base. And she it was an elderly man and he got about halfway out of the pool and she recognized something was wrong. And by the time she got over to him, he collapsed. And she said, You know, Mrs. Gillis, I, I never believed you that I would just like everything to kick in. And next thing I know, you know, who's that person? Well, it's me calling for an AED and calling for backup. And someone called 911 and she got her mask out of her hip sack. She actually went into um, CPR, prepared the person for the AED. By that time, other people had come. Her water director, she was, at the time, she was 16 years old. So um, she did a lot before the more advanced staff that came in to support her. And um, yeah, that went by. So, yeah. And that, that's not the first story that I have. Like, so that is, uh, yeah. that's the bigger picture. That's, that's really why I continue to do this. I spend my summers at the lake in my town running that program because it's just, I don't ever want anyone to ever have to experience the ground, you know, mm -hmm. all the ground for whatever. So, yeah. Yeah, thank you. Thank wow. You. Thank That's you. great. We're lucky to have that program at CCHS. Yeah. I mean, really. And you, you have other um, lifeguard trainers in the audience here, and maybe a former student is also with us of yours that I didn't know. So, you know, just a couple little facts. And I should have mentioned that Andrea is the teacher and the department chair of the health and fitness at the high school. Yes. So, yes, I'm halfway through my third. Excellent. So, you're bound to have a student here. <laughs> <laughs> when did you like start working there when you were like 12? Yes. 
Yes, oh, definitely. Wow. One of my students last year that the Mrs. Gillis, his mother had was my mother. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> and now we're both in And you can tell us the person's about anything <laughs> else. <laughs> well, yeah, when I saw your name on the agenda, I was like, no way. That's one. So. Okay. Well, well, thank, thank, you. You. thank you so much. Thanks, Thanks. so much. That's great. <laughs> All right. Um, on to our minutes. So you should have the minutes from the October 25th meeting. And are there any comments before we approve those minutes? No? You want to make a motion, Alexa? Uh, sure. Um, I move to approve the minutes from our October 25th meeting of this year. Second. Sure. Okay, any discussion? Okay. I'd love to just peek at them. Give me another 15 seconds. Okay. And we are going to vote this by roll call vote. Very delayed in opening, but I did look at them prior. I'm happy to proceed. Okay. okay. And just as a reminder to our members, you will be roll calling for both if you sit on both committees. So roll call, please. Anderson, I for both. Ruth, I for both. Morano, I for both. Rainy, I for both. Rankin, I for both. I for Wilson, I for region. Great. Okay. I need to remind myself to do that sometimes. So sorry about the public reminder. <laughs> I appreciate it. Um, okay. And then on to our correspondence. Did you have any at CPS? I don't think we did. No. And I organized it really well. Yeah. Okay. We, we, um, we had we, two we at were, the region. We were copied, I think, a couple of times on the February book. On the what? Yeah. Oh, once. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, and obviously that didn't we go to the CC'd region. on yes. a few things that had gone to the building committee. Perfect. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And then at the region, we just said two. We had um, Betsy Levinson from the bridge, and we had a parent who shared the video of the concert. And just as a reminder, the Prism concert is December 17th. And I think that was it. All right. So on to our chairs, liaison superintendents reports. Start with, you want to start, Alexa? Sure. I'll start okay. real quick. Um, okay. So, First order of business or reporting, um, a, a bunch of us went to the MASC conference. I don't know that that's happened recently. Um, you know, I think everyone who is sort of paying attention to our year this year can sort of see some emerging themes, which are um, sort of a renewed commitment to best practices and um, continued learning. And the MASC conference, I think, is just just sort of demonstrates how committed we all are to that. So several school committee members attended um, fully or partially this year. Some of the highlights of the sessions that I thought were worth um, sort of highlighting that some of us went to were um, a session on the electrification of uh, bus fleets, school committee roles in financial oversight. I think Sarah went to the unique challenges of regional districts. That was one of them, right? That you went to? Oh, you didn't? I think no. Um, and then, then just, okay. <laughs> I, thought you did. I thought we went separate ways when you were going to that, but I guess it was something else. <laughs> um, and then another thing sort of worth noting that, you know, of course is so obvious, but just sort of worth saying, you know, the morning sessions were, um, sort of meant for all to participate in and sort of the two topics that you would expect were right there. And they were, um, sort of DEIB initiatives in schools and um, mental health. So, you know, I think about that. I think about our goals. I think that um, these are just sort of universal um, priorities that are um, with school committees all across the Commonwealth. Um, Sarah. I have one. Uh, yeah, one of course. So, so I went to the, I went to the tech one mm -hmm. and I went to a couple of DEI ones a couple of the ultimate ads of assessing oh, yeah, students. Yeah, yeah. That one was great. Um, and, oh, and, but, and, and patience. And, but I wanted to say that the common thread of all of the things that I went to, communications was a focus of all of the school committees and all of the schools in terms of 
messaging both in and out. They almost at all of them they talked about like the importance of student uh, student surveys. They talked about how to have consistent messages through all of your you know channels through the whole mm -hmm. system. Like you know the school committee with the administration with the teachers, especially when you're dealing with, 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 with um, you know, the mental health stuff, to have everybody on the same page using the same language is important. Um, but I thought that was interesting. Yeah. That really, and within, you know, there, that was a common thread. Mm -hmm. Everything. Definitely. But no one has a good answer. That's the, that was, the yeah. isn't that, <laughs> Amani? <laughs> isn't that great? <laughs> um, yeah. And then again, I, again, I think, the alignment with our goals, <laughs> communication, DEIB, um, mental health, I think is really, um, it's again, it's sort of just telling. Um, with that, one of the things that I wanted to do, I'm realizing I looked back, I mean, we approved these goals two meetings ago, so I get it's a little premature um, to be sort of doing. Uh, oh, yes, yeah, sure. I was there as well. It's yeah. Over there. Um, I thought one of the best segments I went to was the uh, Happy Lopes who wrote this book, which I recommend to everybody, mm -hmm. who's a DEI director in Newton, mm -hmm. written with her co-author, Henry Kerger, who I believe is the principal of Newton Oregon. Mm -hmm. um, it was a really moving session. Um, mm -hmm. And she has many details on dealing with incidents, all the things we've been talking about you know, throughout the whole interview. I don't know how long she's been there, but I recommend it highly. Um, yeah. Great. So, is, is Henry the superintendent in no, Newton now? No, no. He's still in Newton. Principal. Yeah. Okay, so he was in Bedford, then he went to Newton. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Awesome. Yeah, I mean, I think I think we all found it valuable. I don't think I think. Yeah. I remember driving down, oh, but then you get there, and it was really it was energizing, and 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 every session was like truly worth it. So I'm glad we all went. It's great. Um. Okay, so I wanted to do if everyone would indulge me just because, um, look at the goals document, our tracking document is attached to the agenda. Um, you know, what's nice about this document is it does sort of demonstrate sort of where we are in things. It keeps an eye on what we've started doing, what we haven't started at all. And even in some instances, like what, what we're gonna be able to say, you know, we, we've, we've achieved this goal. Um, but so if we go through, you look at our coffees, that was, um, goal one, a under our professional practice goal of communications. We, Tracy's going to give an update on our coffees in a bit, but I thought that was a worthwhile endeavor. We'll, we'll commence those, um, in the winter and then again in the spring, um, really hate this goal of <laughs> doubling the distribution list, but it's still there. Um, you know, we're, and, and we will work hard to do it. Um, we are, if you've noticed, Lori's um, weekly updates to the parent community have started um, uh, linking to our subscriber distribution list. Um, we'll continue to leverage uh, her social media as well. Um, Can I start? Yeah. Um, so for number two, we're looking at a doubling meaning about another 350 people. Yes. Yes. Okay. Just to yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 You're at 391. Okay. Oh, we have more. Oh, All right. Good. Chip away. We're, we're, we're Thank you. chipping. Um, so I look to 2D. Sarah, I think you emailed Tracy about this too. Um, we were talking about um, trying to figure out and examine other school committees' best practices how they're communicating again internally externally um you know i know one of the things that i looked at like in my free time this summer you know acton has a really you know we do an agenda overview document that sarah and cynthia started last year um they have a really interesting document that i've looked at if we're just as an example of like oh, this could be cool should i try to utilize this tool they did share it with me they were gracious enough to do that i have not utilized this tool yet um just a different way to sort of communicate internally about agenda setting or uh, the agenda itself for example so i didn't know if anyone sarah i think tracy said might have volunteered um wanted express to interest. express interest in taking this on i know 
Um, I did some work on this this summer, so I'd be happy to do that with you if you meant it. Um, and if, um, yeah, I think, I think it was really cool. I was at the MASC conference and see how everybody else's there's stuff that you listen to and say, we could take something from that and there's stuff that you know, that right. Gonna, right. Or that might not work here. That yeah. it, it was great for them, but would right. Yes. Yeah. Right. Um, but it is, yeah, they're, yeah. And I think that, you know, the other thing is um, we talked about there used to be a school committee roundtable that it, but did you go to that from Edco, the Edco one? You went a few no? times, sir, didn't yeah. you? The yeah. Edco roundtable? Yeah. yeah. So because yeah. even last year when we were looking um, to add our Medco representatives, I had called, you know, around to the four districts that had yeah, Medco that. representatives to kind of, you know, get a feel for how did you do this? What does it look like? And I think it's helpful to meet with other school committees and maybe Dorothy could be helpful you know, I, I always want the goal of like hosting some type of like local area workshoppy type thing with Dorothy. So maybe working with her on that and try and recruit people to come here and we can show them what we do and find out what they do. And I think that would be great. So just to add to our goals in there. So I know, I know that's the only problem, but it's more meetings, but it's okay. Yeah. And so I don't know, I think formally in our policies that would make us a working group, which is something that is like a defined charge that has a specific mission and you kind of work together and then you conclude your work and it's over. It's not a subcommittee. Right. So I don't know. And I think we would, I don't know, I'll look into how we formally organize and yeah. figure that out. There are some. Yeah, I think it's a working group. group. There yeah. are different ways that, um, you know, when people are doing work outside of our session, then it's really just an appointment here among the committee. Yeah. And then you make sure you post. Yeah, the meeting. Do all the That's formal like, process. Yes. Yes. You have post. to post. That's, yeah, yeah, yeah. hundred yeah. percent. So um, do we want to just get off and running and look? Would anyone be opposed to appointing Sarah Wilson and Alexa Anderson to a school committee community or and anyone actually and anyone else who might anyone else want to volunteer to join our cause? I would kind of like to volunteer. <laughs> I hate to volunteer, but I, I can't help myself. Okay. Sorry. Um, all right. So what shall we call ourselves? The communications working group. Okay, let's do it. Um, so I would tend to, yeah. If I join, does that make, is it too many people or no? Does it matter if it's a time? Yeah. Carrie could join. I'll, I'll bow out. Oh, no, 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 that's okay. No, I don't know. Do you know? It's a quorum. It's a quorum. Yeah. It's a quorum. Oh yeah. Um, okay. That's fine. Tracy, do it. That's no, fine. I can step out. It's totally fine. You can do it. Yeah, you should, yeah. Do it. What? You want, okay. What does it have to be? So for working group, does it have to be? Fixed. Like, do the designees have to be fixed, or can that be fluid? That oh, people oh, can I don't know. Jump in and out. Like, observe one week, but participate but another week. Oh, else. okay. You guys should do it, Tracy. You do it. I, I will happily step down. You sure? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, we're looking. Um, yeah. Yeah, why don't yeah. we just vote next Great. meeting? Yeah, we're not going to get anything done. It, yeah, good yeah. point, Cynthia. Good Thank point. you. Moving Maybe on. We'll um, note to put that on next meeting's agenda because no one's doing anything the next week over yeah. Thanksgiving. Um, all right. Very good. Uh, yeah, so, oh, and then, you know, you'll see if you guys cruise through this goals document, um, it sort of keeps a status. Oh, and then the other thing, I think, um, with respect to, I was thinking, we were going to do a check-in with our facilitator, Rob Evans. It, we, back in August, we seemed like November seemed like a great time for that. And I feel like, A, November's come and gone. And B, November's so busy with budget. Concord specifically has so many evening meetings. I think Court and Cynthia and Tracy and Lori and I have seen a little bit too much of each other after dark at other people's meetings. Um, so I'm wondering if this might be better um, coinciding with like our, our mid-year kind of goals assessment, which I know we're kind of going to be doing a little bit more, but, um, and going into the winter time frame. So I think that's after April, like at the end of the year. No, January 19th. After the January 10th. Oh, yeah. Yes. 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 Great idea. Um, marvelous. <laughs> yes, I totally concur yeah. with that. So 
you know, if everyone's comfortable with that, I just think it's busy right now. Yeah. We are busy. So, um, as long as no one's missing Rob Evans too much, I think Cynthia's idea of after town meeting is probably when we're going to get to it. Everyone cool with that. So those are the big highlights. Oh, nope. The third highlight, um, Tracy Novick is, is one also a busy lady. Um, she's been hard to schedule. She can come, but not till the end of January. I was just wondering, like, do we, is, do we still think that's worthwhile having her in that time frame? schedule her up? You guys are okay. You are uh, what? Even though we passed it. Yeah. A lot of budget. Still do. Right. Yes. So, um, yeah, it'll be yeah, yeah. same time late yeah. January, early February for her. Yep. Yeah. She, and I think she's available on January 24th. Okay, great. So mm-hmm. we'll probably put her in there after town meeting again, after town. Um, okay. Are you ready for uh, me? Can I are you a couple of things? Sure. I think I thought I mentioned that before, but maybe I didn't. So youth risk survey, I don't see that on our list. And that's a pretty important on the data list, oh, is that what you mean? On the goals list. I wonder if that was an oversight, because I think we talked about it, like yeah. an oversight on my part in putting yeah. this document no, together. No, 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 no. Oh. But it's this year. We have it last year. But we have the results. We have the results now. Yeah, yeah. 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 we haven't seen the results, right? Right. right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I mean, they're public. Right. They're on our website. Right. Yeah. It's they're on our website. It's just aggregate, because I know I've looked at the aggregate data. Emerson, the second game is on our website. Oh, okay. This Carlisle have theirs. Haven't talked about it yet. And then the other I'm thing is, yeah. Your administrator said, I know Matt. Yeah. Yeah. And it's seven, eight, and ten. It's uh, six, eight, and nine. Oh, okay. That's a lot. Good. Um, and then the other thing is reviewing the school committee. Yeah. Did we, we need to do that? Did we, we talked about that on yes, our goals? and we talked about maybe having a committee to do it that. On the goals. No, but it's not on the goals. It's not on the goals. Yeah, we need to do it because it doesn't. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. All right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It doesn't have to be completely redone. Right. 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 Okay. Good point. Updating. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well. Um. Oh, so I got time to do that. Yeah. Awesome. That's it. All right, you good? Okay. Yeah, moving on. All right, passing the, the Can I move on? Okay, so um, we've had our. I'm gonna. I'm gonna be very brief. Um, we've. We oh, wait, had our. You have a question. Yeah. This is chair still. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Chairs first. Sorry. Um, we've had our coffees. We had a Carlisle coffee. We had two Concord coffees. One during the day. One in the evening. And a coffee in Boston. There were some common themes that came out of our coffees that actually kind of line up with our goals, which is great when this happens. Um, Things we're talking about with student achievement, communication, building community were come at some of the common themes. And we got some great feedback from all of our coffees. Um, anyone else want to comment anything on the coffees? If you attended, do you think I've covered enough of it? I think we need some Boston attention. Um, we had a very small turnout, but it was a very engaged one. Um, I interpret some of the feedback to include uh, might the uh, school committee and or administration look at the metro director reporting structure. Mm-hmm. Uh, we heard pretty clearly, Tracy. Um, and also advocacy for uh, more attention to uh, Concord to Boston exchanges with all the efforts to bring Boston to Concord. Could we uh, revisit some of the uh, the uh, efforts in the other direction and rebuild those post uh, COVID? Uh, references to our efforts to rebuild trust generally, um, and then specifically about coffees, uh, some ideas about how to further improve back to communication, further improve our outreach on the coffee so mm-hmm. we can uh, try to generate more participation. Yeah. And I think, you know, we we had the most people showed up at the Carlisle Coffee. You guys had, I think, nine yeah. people, right? Concord, we had three. Boston, we probably had about seven. And I think that, you know, if we offer another round of coffees in the winter or the spring, 
probably the spring seems more most appropriate. Um, continue to do the same outreach. And if anybody has any other ideas for outreach, do that. I do know that in Boston, they actually, um, Tanika went through the list and made phone calls too, right? Yeah. Yeah, she did. So, you know, we were doing a ton of, re- oh, it looks like Aisha's in with her hand up. Go ahead, Aisha. She muted. Yeah. Oh, I think I, so. I just think that, um, like, like the copies were really good, and it was, um, I know I said this at the Boston Coffee Hour, but it was eye opening. Um, it was eye opening and kind of um scary. What I think Mexico kids go through on a daily basis because of what I had to go through and the comments that were made to me by other Concord and Carlisle families. But and these are these are adults that should know better, and it it bothers me. Like it's scary to think that. And and like I said, I said this at the coffee at both coffees that, you know, the issues that we're having, especially at the middle school, start at home. And that's why, you know, I suggested maybe some more like social type things where, you know, we can rebuild that trust, like Court said, and we can build better um you know, better relationships. And we, we can show that Meckle families are made up of, work, you know, hardworking, intelligent young people and not um, what, you know, this, this negative um, stigma, I feel like that some people think that we have. Great. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. So we can look forward to more coffees, which will be great. And I think, you know, I, I do think some of the things we talked about too, we'll work on at the, we, talked about to do it at PTG president's meeting with all the PTG presidents and Mm -hmm. to see if we can build some of those things back in again, because some of it is not school committee's responsibility. It's more of, you know, PTG and, you know, parents and teachers and the parent teacher group. So I will say, I think in those PTG meetings, I observed many of them last year. And then this year there's um, a perceptible shift in, um, the like sort of enthusiasm and engagement on the PTG side now that there's this perception of, um, you know, sort of getting over that COVID hurdle. So I think if you're going to get some real big shifts, this is a good time to capitalize on that sort of renewed sense of urgency around community building in general. Um, I think this has been a theme we've seen um, in those meetings. So I think it's yeah. well-timed. Yep. Um, so that was it for coffees. Um, Alexa, Lori, and I had a meeting with Verizon and this, it just the background on this is there was a meeting way back in 2017 about, um, potential cell phone, cell, a cell phone tower on the, uh, regional campus. And there are definitely some concerns over, I would call it, you know, safety, at the high school in particular. I don't know if you want to um, comment on story you, after story. If you can just briefly comment on that. Yeah, that's student okay. in crisis outside and we can't call 911 from, you can text 911 now, thankfully, but um, it's time we couldn't call. We can't pull up Aspen. We can't call for help inside the building. Really scary situation last year that among others, but really challenging environment. So I think we need to look at the option Verizon's giving us. We, tiptoed with it a little bit five years ago. It was, I think we all thought the town was going to be able to activate more effectively through no fault of anyone's, Mm -hmm. Uh, but the opportunity is still there. And I feel really strongly we need to, to consider it a safety issue. Yeah. And I do, you know, this is not like, you know, parents can't text their kids. This is police and fire can't communicate with each other. They can't communicate with people in the building. If there's you know, an incident, maybe on a bus, you're not near a landline or whatever. So if you've been at the high school, you kind of know the situation. We called, we called, we called for help from here yesterday because Katie Stahl was outside and could only text me. So yes, it's 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 ongoing. It's ongoing and it's real. So we are, we are exploring that. So the next step in that is that Verizon will do a site visit to determine possibilities on the campus and they'll get a proposal to us. Um, and it would generate some revenue. I mean, that is the other piece of it. So we will keep you updated on that. And then the last thing that I had really was our. Yep. Ask a question about that. Yep. With whom at the town are we coordinating these are the telecommunications? Yeah. So I've met with Carrie and talked also with um, Marsha Rasmussen 
there's a number of them who are very also actively engaged in talking with Verizon. Verizon ideally wants two towers, one at the high school and another one to cover downtown. Um, so we're staying synced up. We're both in the early phases of figuring out how to activate. Obviously, we need your endorsement to do that. Um, so it's a parallel conversation right now, and we'll continue to mm-hmm. be in communication yeah. with each other. Yeah. And the and- other thing that the gentleman from Verizon did say, which I was surprised at from sort of the commencement of a proposal, if you will, that he would bring to us to getting this done. This is a, this is not quick. This is a, a two, two year years. kind of process. So, um, and I know the town has some urgency around the, um, celebration they want some um so i know you know they have some urgency around it too but um you know i think a joint effort is again warranted because to get proper service in the town especially as you get influx of people um for the 250th year look at you you need some and obviously we're aiming to benefit beyond the high school i was at emerson for the alcott turkey trot and realized i was completely off grid no cell, no text, no nothing. nothing. It was completely a void. And um, the Alcott administrators brought their walkie talkies to communicate with the school. And I thought, where 2022, that's the best we have. We so yeah. we'd love to have everybody benefit. And yeah. it should also be noted that Middlesex has one on their campus uh, and they had a similar issue and they were really concerned about safety because they had no coverage out there on Lowell Road. So there is a tower. If you want to take a little trip, you can see what it looks like. I have um, pictures. I could see. Yeah, we have some That's pictures. What does the partnership look like? Is it like, yeah, yeah. Is it, do they lease property? Oh, hold on, Carrie. Sorry. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead, Carrie. Oh, I was just sorry, Cynthia. I can't hear you very well. The, I think your microphone not be working. So sorry if I spoke over you. Um, I I was just wondering what the partnership looks like. Do they lease property? Is it like what do they? What does it? How does it work? Uh, well, we we can get into this a little bit more. This was just a very high level, just at this <laughs> to talk about. Um, but basically, they build the tower and they pay us with that would. Like there's no cost to us yeah. essentially. We have a lot of homework to do. We have a lot of homework. Yeah, this is very preliminary. Very preliminary. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's not even. Yeah. You mentioned you mentioned money being, uh, albeit secondary, still significant here. Did they give you a sense of magnitude? They did, yes. but I think it's too early to kind of. Sit. The way I look at that, that's always your first offer. <laughs> so I think it's too early to say exactly what the money would be because it would be Verizon and then other carriers would also um, generate revenue. So you're privy to it and we'll learn at some point? No, it's not that I'm privy to it. I just think that this is really early without having a proposal. It was a conversation. No, no, I was just asking yeah. if they gave you a general sense of the magnitude of the money. It's 20 to 30 per provider on the tower. Annual. Annually, yeah. Thank you. yes. That's all I wanted to know. Okay, sorry. I didn't know if I should be like, I, I don't have anything written in <laughs> front of me. In, yeah. I, I'm not going to say no. he's going to hold to it's, that. Yeah, yeah. 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 No. But these no. conversations are happening in you know thousands of communities around yeah. the entire planet. Yeah. It's not anything that's Correct. too too touchy. Yeah. 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 Okay. yeah. yeah. I, I've heard that number in other settings in my personal life. So I think it's kind of their standard number. Yeah. yeah. If you want to put a good negotiator on it, put well, Bob on yeah. it, he's pretty, <laughs> pretty tough with that. <laughs> I always think there's more money to go and try to ask. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. All right. Um, and then my, the last thing that I had was just on our January 3rd meeting. So our meeting is January 3rd. I would ask if people um, could hold that as a potential, if we needed, it would be a budget only meeting. It's really, it comes right after break and posting is challenging because of the timing. So what I would propose is that we have our regular business meeting on January 10th, um, which would be the following Tuesday. And then just to, we'll keep that third in there if we need it. If we don't need it, we'll cancel it. So we would meet the 10th, the 10th and and the 24th, 24th. And the third we hold. The third we hold. Is anyone opposed to that? I'm not opposed. Just a practical question for mm-hmm. Lori and Bob. Um, given the fact that uh, you want to enjoy a few days of holiday, as do we, um, are you going to be able to get material to us okay? 
I think that's why we're suggesting moving the, to the yeah. 10th. So we're not all squished into that week between the two holidays. I'm really hoping we don't need the third. Yeah. And it really will be the 10th. But the third is kind of a just in case, you know, we don't know what December looks like right now. It's a just in case meeting. Just in case. And we'd have 48 or uh, 72 hours to study your material. Uh, you. Yeah, I think by then you'll be so far into the budget process, you'll have had a month of budget and you'll know yeah. what's left to discuss. And hopefully it's short and sweet because the warrant closes the next day. The next day. <laughs> so, yeah. The 6th and the 20th of December. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 So those don't change. So it would really just be adding on the 10th. Okay. Yeah. So I think Aaron's at home. Yeah. So Aaron, if you could add that. Yeah, yes, yes, exactly. Yeah, ideally. Yes, ideally swapping the third for the 10th, but I just right. like to keep a placeholder just in case. Okay. All right. And then that's all I had. So on to our liaison. Oh, oh superintendent first. And we haven't done no, you can do liaison first. Liaison first and then we'll go to you. Okay. All right. So let's just go around the room for anyone that had something. Court, do you want to start? I think I can be quick. Um, one, uh, Carrie Rankin and I, I believe, uh, Carrie, you too have received uh, some messaging from Kristen in regard to strategic plan. And I wonder if uh, Kristen, maybe you're the one to look to for this. Um, you're asking that each member of the planning committee talk with their constituent groups. Should that include the school committee? Uh, because it's actually to come back to us at a later date. Um, or do we sort of conflict the process? I can't remember what we did before. Yeah, we come back out okay. with, the, with the draft plan and then you... Fine. So if we have other constituent groups that can be of value, fine, but the school committee is already at the center of it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, number two, uh, for pencil only, it looks like that Concord will receive a group of students and uh, town officials from Nanai, Japan, on uh, October 28th for a very short visit next year. They're going to spend as much time in Boston as they do in Concord. A lot needs to be fleshed out, but they've already shared that in a very initial date. Oops, that's what. Um, and uh, just by way of community news, I think of importance to the school committee, on December 4th at 2 p.m. at the Fenn School, the Human Rights Council will uh, have a reception that will be de facto a recognition for Police Chief Joe O'Connor uh, just before his departure. Uh, and regrettably, I'll be out of town, um, but I'm putting together the PR for that this week. Um, it'd be wonderful if we, we could have some school committee in attendance. Yeah. A reminder, please. Uh, I, will get a, I will get a reminder to you. And uh, Tracy, I think that's all I've got. Okay. Thank you. Great. Um, who else is something? Uh, Sharon, do you have anything? No. Any updates? No? Okay, Sarah. Great. Uh, yep. I'll report uh, briefly on the um, Everything's great. Smart <laughs> good attendance at events. Uh, yeah. Drugs Ed is great, but make sure you get your plums reserved. Plums are always <laughs> in And uh, that's sort of all there is for there. Um, and then we do the car a lot. Yeah, do yeah. it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so we're thinking, makes sense a little bit of what's going on in Carlisle. But so do you guys have a sense of if it's who are going to be joining the other? Um, and so our, really, and we had our school committee uh, coffee that was very Carlisle focused. A lot of, I mean, to your point, mm -hmm. a lot of stuff that is not under school committee yeah. purview, but so again, shared the great. Um, Great recall, um, and doing a little breakdown of everything. And then the big error is communication, right? Mm -hmm. and I think it makes sense offline to talk about more of the specifics. Some are very Carlisle specific concerns. Um, there was a concern about the safety without cell mm -hmm. perception, right? That was a, that was a point. Mm -hmm. um, so not any real big surprises, but some actually some interesting athletes asks and curiosities, mm -hmm. um, but not going to tell much for the conversation. And then we had our school committee maybe two weeks ago, where we also looked, at, similar to this, we looked at student achievement. Um, so we looked at MCAS, we looked at Dibbles, we looked at STAR. Um, we looked at 
I encourage everybody to watch some Carlisle School Committee meetings every now and then just to know what's going on with the mm-hmm. five percent of the kids that come in. Mm-hmm. But if you're only going to watch one school committee meeting from this year from Carlisle, that would be one because it covered everything. It covered the achievement and and the, and the school improvement plan and the budget. Um, and mm-hmm. so it kind of is a it's a three hour long meeting, but it's uh, it's it, worth it. It was it, it was October and November meeting. This year. was our November meeting. Okay. It's the day after our last meeting. So oh, wow. Okay. 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 Uh, thank you. Thanks. Um, actually really helpful. And I, I think that's all. Uh, there's no reports from the so, Okay. Great. <laughs> Keep us posted on that. Thank you. did hear from Ryan. They're getting all their budgets in like the next two weeks. So I'm sure once that happens, we'll hear from you. All right. Cynthia, you. So I just piggyback on that. I'm just going to file out with the house. And I want to give a shout out to our um, member, Sharon Witt, who has been pivotal in launching a new student newspaper called the Mas Mosquito. Mosquito. And it sounds really incredible. She did bring a copy. It looks so good. So you'll have to bring one next time. You'll have to see it. I mean, it's real. So, but it, everybody was so excited about it. And they really just let the kids do their own thing. They don't really edit it or, you know, Tell them this is not right. Or there was an article about the best candy sign. That's what I want to see. Um, so <laughs> thank you very much for doing that, Sharon. Um, where do we have a lot of income? Uh, should we just go to the guideline last night? We didn't get it right. So the total pool, as they call it, was 3.63, which is a, a full percentage point of where they usually want to be at four. Um, so it broke down as 5% for the town. 3.3 for CPS and 2.4 for the region. Did I get it right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, but that took a long time. That was not a quick decision. And they worked very methodically on spreadsheets. Um, so I thank them all for their hard work. Um, did I miss anything from that? No. I think that was the They were focused was, uh, on <laughs> one thing, <laughs> and that was what they were doing. Um, and, and, and I, I guess what struck me is that. It does seem like a very inexact science, but I had to remind myself that. Am I right? But but I had to remind myself that a lot of independent work went in prior to that, and uh, so it was not performance art last night. It was mm-hmm. us watching them live. Yeah, I know. Uh, trying to trying to bang their heads against this thing and come up with, with some clear answers uh, by way of guidance. And I thought there was a very good presentation on capital, not not. Three capital, but the other tiers of capital, um, and they were sort of warned or uh, suggested that they put the eye on that. Uh, um, let's see. <clears throat> For the PEG Access Advisory Committee, we're beginning the process with our consultant to review our franchise agreement, which is a 10 year agreement. She gave us the eye opening number that the agreement is worth $63 million to contest the 10 year agreement. So we have, uh, you know, it's, it's not um, nothing, and we have some leverage in terms of when we need to get some things like that. So 63 is our consultant, Concord's consultants projected Comcast revenue, right. of which we will take some negotiated percentage. Right. Not to exceed 5%. Right. Thank you. Um, so that was interesting. Um, the Climate Action Advisory Board, uh, they were talking about um, they have final candidates. I have not heard anything that they hired the director. I have not. I they reposted and had a better pool, and that was the last I heard. That's what that's what they said. Yeah, the sustainability director. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so that's one of my new parties. Um, she wants to vote. Yeah, they're very eager, so they're kind of looking, waiting for leadership. They did have some discussions about what they call school committee sustainability, and so you need to fix that. It's kind of joke. Just, Whatever, yeah. Um, but Brad's their delegate, I think. He's now a member of it. Yeah. Yep. yep. Um, they also talk a lot about transportation, um, trying to reduce all kind of single things of the, the mile and five mile trips part of this. What is the bringing the large amount of carbon emissions? 
increasing bus ridership and increasing ridership of all kinds of alternatives, not just school bus, but all kinds of other transportation. Because we are driving our cars. Okay. All right. Carrie, I don't want to leave you off online, but it, your she camera's not showing. So, okay. She's so off. I'm sure she's with us. I don't think she's anything else. She's coming her. back. She's, she's coming back. Me. Okay. All right. And on to Dr. Hunter. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I'll just uh, offer one specific highlight. I think mostly uh, last week we launched the three hour workshop for all of the ninth graders. Um, so ideas came in and led that one team at a time. Uh, and I don't think we can say enough that it exceeded our expectations um, in setting a stage for kids to feel like they have open avenues to talk about inclusion, know more about how to handle incidents and respond and be upstanders. And just in the feedback we got, we had a really nice email from a parent yesterday naming that her child had been a little re reluctant to go or not as engaged, but by the time it happened was, um, it came home and just reported that it helped her as a student feel more included and helped her understand kids around her more. And I think, I think that's ultimately our overall goal is that kids feel more welcome and connected at school and, um, more accepting and welcoming of others. So it was a great launch. Um, thanks to CEF for funding that, uh, you'll see, we've got to talk with you as sustainable fiscal piece of it and what we're going to do for that. But um, really great inaugural launch with the ninth grade. So it's a good couple of days. It's great. Yeah. I know some of us have ninth graders who attended, right? This was great. Yeah, so we got the feedback on the good, other side, good. which was great. Really, really, positive. that's the feedback we want. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> us thinking it was great is less important. But. Yeah. Yeah. And I, and I even have a friend whose child missed it and was going to reach out to Andrew to see if there was any type oh, wow. of, you know, she's like, I really want my kid to be there. And is yeah. there anything that we can do at home to like replicate that? Cause kids were out sick and it will be hard to replicate. Yeah. You can't, um, but we'll what think I on what we might offer. Yeah. yeah. If there's anything yeah. out there. So were our own teachers involved? Um, the ninth grade teachers were, uh, they mm -hmm. stayed with the teams. So there's your ninth grade Academy at work. And uh, that I think also, helps to build transferability because in classrooms, kids and teachers were together and that'll make its way back to the main yeah. classroom. And guidance was with the team too. So it was yep. teachers yep. and guidance together, which was great. Yeah. So, great. All right. Thank you. All right. Moving on to our discussion, capital needs at CCHS. So this is just the very beginning of a discussion about our campus. Um, you have in your agenda overview, you have the information on the previous campus advisory committee and that committee had about 17 people on it. There were students, teachers, administrators, members Wide of the range community. Of the town yeah. leadership. Yep. So if you went through all of that, the town leadership's there, everyone was in there. Um, and they did some surveys to see what would make the most sense for things at the high school. And they had some recommendations. So, so that group, they got together, there was a report that was generated. And this is where I get a little fuzzy because I'm not really sure what happened at the school committee level. You want me to story tell? Yes. So great. it was a camp, it was a subcommittee of the school committee. So it wasn't Right. Just an ad hoc group. It was a very formal group. The 17, 18 years. So this is as the landfill is remediated and finally going to be available to the campus. Um, plus the road was a big discussion as well. And then the assessment of the other needs of the campus. So that 17, 18 year, that committee that you just mm -hmm. described did a lot of data gathering and input gathering from the community to determine the priorities for the campus. The road and parking at the time, which we'll put off to the side, but the road was always the top priority and frankly became the stumbling block because until that got done, which it's just now going to get done, um, all the others went on hold. So there's a, a, a list of other priorities that were named. The two biggest ones I think that we probably leave floating around would be the still lack of compliance with the restrooms at the stadium and that landfill space, which a few years ago, we thought maybe a track would be an awesome thing to put there. Um, 
So that's where we are, yeah. I think. And that led from that group, that first 2017, 18 year to a more um, actualized group. The second, eight, second, my second year, that's why I keep saying it that way. 18, 19 was another subcommittee of the school committee um, that then worked with Gale Engineering to get a feasibility study done. So we actually have schematics of the campus and how things could fit. Parking was in the discussion, so that's yeah. been there. So there'd be some editing to do and we'd want them to revisit the numbers, of course. Um, but there's a lot of work done to really try to analyze what the options were and if the priorities could all be met or if we were going to have to pick and choose. At the time, they could do they could do everything, including parking. So knowing we're not pursuing that, it all fits. That's the bottom line. Um, there's some reconfiguring to do with the skate park that would have to get looked at whether that would still fit. Um, it might actually now without the parking right there. So it would need some refresh, but I don't think you'd have to do a do over. Um, there was some reasonable amounts of money put to that. So it'd be worth using as a starting point. Mm -hmm. And this is not for a warrant article this no. year. <laughs> this is just a very preliminary discussion of like, let's keep moving forward and pick up the work that kind of got put on hold. And I think that again, COVID loves to just, jump in there and kill everything and kill all our fun here. But I think that we need to start thinking about finishing up that high school campus. I do, you know, some of us spend a lot of time down by the football fields. And I know there's discussion about bathrooms and things like that, but we're really, it is really problematic. There's not a ton of lighting picture porta potty at night when someone is in there. So just, that's just food for thought. So I just want to open this up to a little bit of discussion and options of how to maybe move forward, which is maybe, you know, what I would suggest is if we can look at that Gale uh, report and re if we can have Bob and Lori reach back out to see what would it take, how much, I don't want to say how much money would it take, but like what yeah. would it take to refresh that report a little bit and see what's still feasible mm -hmm. on the campus? If anyone has anything they'd like to okay. add to that or? Yeah, Cynthia. So, we need to reach out to the like word about solar. This is their favorite site. Right. And the solar, well, the solar on the rooftop that, so I should have backed up to say that the first two things that were on, you know, that charge was solar on the roof and it was the facilities the building. So, yeah, so that would be. Like, and what? They also like the field. The landfill. What, the landfill field. And I understand they like that. And I guess no, I'll say, yeah. Reach out to them. Yep. Don't let them get too far down. I and mean, they wouldn't, obviously, without having a conversation with us. But yeah. and I do think we have to go back to the wishes of that committee too. Is like, look at the solar and the roof in that field. You know, there there is definitely a need for a track. There's needs for other things on the campus that the campus is requiring for kids. Reach out and do it. Them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's just they see this big open space sitting there. You know, right? That we don't probably have any plans for. That's not the case. I'm yeah. not even sure it's viable because you can't permeate the I, cap on the landfill. I, but I know. it's another discussion. Yeah. Yeah. So I just don't want to get yeah. too far. No, 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 no. Right. Yeah. It's a very tender site. It Doesn't sure is. A track yeah. nice and <laughs> surface. The tender level. site of <laughs> landfillingness. <laughs> yeah. Oh, um, I just want to look back at some yeah. of the conversations and stuff. You know, I didn't, I don't, yeah. I didn't yeah. specific about this stuff when I was, when, Last time we were talking about the uh, paving, I wanted to get some good background. Yeah. And the archives of Mosquito are phenomenal. Yeah, Sarah does. Oh, a good that's job. a good point. Yeah, so okay. Go to the, yeah. Is, so the, the, is it searchable? Like, is Mosquito so searchable? The thing about the Mosquito is it's not indexed, right? So you can't look on Google and or any search engine and yeah. find, so like, it is mm -hmm. all housed in, there. in its own website. But then searching there. And then yeah. searching there is yeah. great, but right. they don't oh. allow access my world without knowing okay. 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 Okay.
didn't put, you know, the past five years of minutes on, but that's a longer term project is to get more minutes on yeah, that drive. Help you with this. Yeah. So then that it becomes searchable for what you're looking for because it is actually right. super helpful. So yeah, the whole drive, anything on it searchable by keyword. Unless it's in like uh, maybe if it's in PDF, if it's in a PDF, course, it's, in a PDF, PDF it's not. That's why we're trying to keep right. everything yeah. out of PDF. PDF. So that yeah. It's all interactive. Yeah. 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 So that was really, you know, just the start of our campus discussion. And do, yeah, just one other needs? piece, yeah. um, because we've looked at the CPS uh, capital plan for a little while after the new school, we had a five year capital plan, but really it was leftovers of uh, um, VE stuff and little things that needed attention. Um, we phased that out because we either decided they didn't need to be done or we did them. So there really isn't a five-year plan because the building's so new. So right now we're still working on fixing things when they break, m maintaining new equipment because we're seven years in. I think you're going to hit the 10-year mark and that's going to start to change and we'll start to bring you projections. So it could be these next few years is a nice window to look at the campus mm -hmm. where you don't have a lot of other maintenance to do, okay. which is 10 to 15 years. You're definitely going to start to have to do things. So, okay. yeah. Okay. And that, that affords us to do some phasing that Could. reduces yeah. the pressure on the town. Yeah. 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 Was the issue with the uh, HVAC sort of a, a big bone hot? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. That's, That's the short answer, right? <laughs> <laughs> AC issue? Is what? An enigma. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think it's disappointing that we had that kind of it issue with a seven-year. No. 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 That was... How much was that? I don't have it. Yeah, I don't know the exact figure. I, I think it's over 30, 30 ish. Oh, okay. Yeah. It does read, just so you know, it requires a crane to yeah. fix. So there's a day coming where it's going to look like a major fix, and probably it's not so as major as it looks. We haven't had the crane, it got postponed. So um, it's just AC. Just AC related. Yeah. Okay. I hope it's not a prediction, but in my last building, a lot of HP units at 10 years. Yeah, it's a lot, lot smaller than the high school group. The cost was a lot less. So, so yeah, we might get to the 10 year mark. And, well, people look at them and they say, you know, it's not looking so good, right? Okay. okay. All right. And that brings us to. The data presentation. So I'm going to, we have been waiting for this. I'm going to turn it over to Kristen. So Terry can actually join us up here. And this is probably my favorite year of presenting all the academic achievement data for you guys, because um, I have a partner. I have a nerdy partner. And can you introduce Carrie to yes, the whole committee in her so, new role? Um, Carrie uh, Jerke is um, our academic coordinator with the great um, insight of the school committee. Last year, we were able to hire her um, because if you remember Bob Barty, 54 year veteran of the district retired, we all reallocated some of those funds um, and hired Carrie from the middle school where she was a science teacher and department chair uh, and worked with me and the department through the curriculum voucher that we went through. And you're going to be seeing some results of that uh, when we look at the science stuff. It's all good. So, um, and she's even more than her than I am. She, like, as we were meeting about this, and she gets more and more excited as the meeting goes on, and most people, their eyes glaze over. So, fun to have somebody to look at all these numbers with. So, we um, gave you this presentation at, in, uh, ahead of time, and there are 60 slides here. So we want to um, give you all the information in slide form. We're not going to talk about everything that's there, uh, although we're happy to speak to it if you have questions. Um, so we're going to present on 20 of the slides. Um, and if we could just ask if you try to hold your larger questions to the end. Um, and if there's further questions, we can follow up after. So our agenda is to do five things. The first is to look at our data for the uh, achievement of our students for English language arts. Second is mathematics. Third is science. All of those are MCAS data. Um, we'll look at CPS and CCHS, and then overall, um, how our students fared, and then how our subgroups fared. Um, and fourth, we'll talk about the access test, which is the 
yearly test of students who are English language learners. Um, and fifth, we, and finally, we'll talk about uh, the SAT, ACT, and advanced placements that are taken by our high school students. So I want you to take six things away from this presentation today. Uh, the first is that um, COVID and the pandemic had a profound negative impact on student learning in all areas. Um, and that's true in Massachusetts. The way that we know that is that uh, you contrast the 2019 scores so pre-pandemic to 2022 scores, the ones from last spring. So profound, I think there's been lots of news reports on this. This is a national trend as well, but also seen in Massachusetts. Uh, in this, um, very troubling, the trend is magnified among historically marginalized populations. So uh, our, our students uh, who are identified as students of color or low income, our English language learners or students with disabilities are uh, across the state were um, disproportionately impacted, negatively impacted. So you'll see that the downward trend is deeper for most sense of the population uh, in the state. So uh, yeah, another really big thing to notice is that younger students were more in negatively impacted than older students. So if you look at the second, third, fourth, fifth graders, you know, the kids who were just learning to read and learning to read for content, for example, were more effective than kids who are, say, in high school. Uh, so that was all true for the whole state and for the country. Uh, and number four is that the negative impact is reflected in our local data as well um, at Concord Public Schools and Concord Carlisle High School, um, although it is not as profound as the state level. So um, what you'll see is sort of the first half of a V on all of our graphs. So going from 2019 to 2021, you'll see a downward trend. Students do not, uh, uh, did not uh, get as much learning in uh, as their uh, predecessors at that same age. Um, number five is the good news. So by 2022, last spring, we were uh, seeing a bounce back. So from the learning loss, meaning the graphs actually looked like a V. So most of them, where you know you see it going down from 2019 to 2021 as the first side of the V, but then back up for 2022. And many of our populations actually uh, have recovered to pre-pandemic levels. So that's great, great news. Um, and then the last thing I just wanted to point out is that um, to protect student privacy, particularly among our subgroups, we list data by percentages, not by number of students. So part of our subgroups could be one student uh, or two students. So they're very, very recognizable. If you pull out like a student who is um, a black male student who may be on an IEP at say eighth grade. That's a very recognizable kid. So we don't do that to protect student rights. Okay, I'll just talk quickly about the student growth percentile. A lot of our graphs are focused on that. And it's sort of a strange concept to wrap your mind around. So the student growth percentile um, is a number that measures student achievement over time. And they are being compared to a cohort of students within the state that scored similarly to them the last time the test was given. So if a student has a growth percentile of 50%, that means that when they took the most recent test, they scored better than 50% of the other people from their cohort, um, from that same cohort from the last test. Does that make sense to everyone? It, so um, one of the things that I think is really uh, worth realizing, first off, is that in 2021, because the, the test was so different, and kids weren't tested in 2020, they used a nebulous different calculation um, that is not comparable to the 2019 and the 2021 um, direct, uh, 2022 SDPs draft. Um, it does certainly show a downward trend. Kids across the state did not do as well on the impasse in 2021 as they have in the previous years. Um, but it's not a direct correlation. So the 
Um, when you're looking at their SVP scores now, I would more compare their 2019 SVPs to their 2020 SVPs, which is what I did in the graphs. Um, and do keep in mind that a score anywhere between 40 and 60 is considered moderate growth and above 60 is higher growth. And you see that um, many, many of our subgroups are scoring in this higher growth range and nearly everything scores in moderate. All right, so this is our first um, historical overview looking at the district wide um, grades four through 12. PLA data. Um, you can see the state proficiency uh, is a dotted line, conquer proficiency is the green line, and then this is shown 2017 through 2022. So you can see certainly from 2019 to 2021 a downward trend. Um, and that did continue in PLA into 2022, both at the state level much more sharply and at conquer level a little more shallowly. You can see that um, compared to the state, our students are still doing very well despite that um, downward trend. And certainly when um, we had our little desk, we did a whole group thing on this and said, you know, expecting that this is going to level up and start going up again. So I should see that in, in LA, it, it's a pandemic out of six. If we break this down a little bit more by by subgroups, um, I chose to, to have you look at races. It shows um, how the different subgroups were impacted and how they have bounced back since 2019. You can definitely see much sharper increases in some subgroups than others, but you can see that everyone has had this bounce back um, and some some very sharply even back to uh, pre pandemic level. Uh, our IEP and 504 subgroups had a dramatic bounce back, and I think it's really amazing to see that they, they came back to a level that's even higher than their growth percentile was in 2019, um, and they are narrowed their performance gap. Well, low income students are showing a similar trend, um, but are are still catching up to the severe impact of pandemic students. And I thought that Yale data was very interesting. Um, our Yale students generally show a lot of growth over time because they are learning the language um, from year to year. So they have very high SGPs. You can see that uh, you can see that the pandemic had a severe impact on that for our EL students. And then they had a very strong bounce back and have nearly now um, achieved where they were uh, pre-pandemic. And I fully expect this year that that would cross over higher than Right, so now we're getting into the math historical data, and uh, this is good, good news, even better than ELA, which is you can see the bounce back that we upward side happening. Uh, and for all of our students, we take the MCAS and math, so that's uh, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, and then tenth graders. Um, we score an average of 30% higher than the CEO. So we're really, really pleased with that. So here is, again, the same subgroup of looking at different races and um, how they fared on the map and past. Um, so as you can see, we've seen a really nice bounce back. Um, Definitely went pretty low um, for 2021 for that speed decline, but very quickly uh, bounced up. And uh, I'm so excited about this. I think part of this is um, attributable to the calculus project that we're doing in uh, middle school. So uh, I can see that very clearly. 
um, in the uh, CCHS, looking at the math and fast data, I just thought it was a nice uh, bright spot because you can see that the units on IEPs and 504s are really closing the proficiency gap um, by the 10th grade level. And again, their SGP is really mirroring, if not surpassing, that of the students that are not on IEPs and 504s, which is showing uh, the effectiveness of a lot of these interventions. Science is a nice bright spot uh, this year. Um, you see that despite the pandemic, our students really um, did very well, even in 2021, in the state, and then took a huge leap in 2022 um, with excellent scores. So, right now, SGP is calculated for science, they're only calculated for ELA and math. So now we're starting the fourth part of the presentation, which is just looking at um, the access test, which is how our initial numbers there. They always fare very, very well conquered, and you can see this. this no difference this next year. Um, so 18 of our students improved uh, in the free STEM level. Eight of our students dropped in their level. Um, and that's about what we've seen in the past. Um, we're really lucky here in Concord and Concord Bible High School to have uh, fantastic staff to work. Um, and so we really try to get students to jump one, two, or three levels in one year. And so that's pretty amazing. Looking at the college readiness data, um, first data point we looked at were that was the SAT performance. Um, and this just breaks it down by subgroup and uh, just shows the averages. So I'm sure you're all aware of that in case someone's name is an SAT is scored out of 800 points uh, each of the sections. The national averages for reading the molding and for math are in the 520s. And you can see that all of, all of our students. Sort of this, those Can I just ask a quick question on this one? How does this, um, how do the SAT scores compare to previous years? Like, do you find the same um, slump and then followed by back to back to normal, or where are we? I I honestly didn't look at that. That's a great question. Um, and we're happy to get back to you. Yeah. I can, I can okay. Sure. And I just have a follow-up question on the numbers of students taking the test. Are we seeing a reduction uh, situation? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then this rule is by, I looked at it briefly, it is by the year. So if they used to do the graduating cohort, mm -hmm. and then in 2017 or something, they just said, okay, it's the year. That's probably the nation, but about so many mm -hmm. juniors. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and There's a lot of juniors want to be done by, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. totally. Yeah. Um, but I will look up the SAT historical um, trends as well, score trends as well. The ACT, keep in mind, is a much smaller sample size. Many fewer students take this. Uh, the, it scored out of 36 points. I actually didn't find that. Um, scored, <laughs> you. <laughs> scored out of 36 points in the score of 29, which was our composite average uh, at CPHS, placing students in the 91st percentile. You oh. can see as well about the national average composite score, which is the 19th. So, wow. Um, yeah. Wow. Very well. yeah, that's a really so big is this amazing message day. everyone should be taking the ACT. Well, <laughs> includes. Science. Yeah. The SAT doesn't. And you can see from all of our science scores how strong we are. Right. Science. Uh, it actually has a STEM category in some mm -hmm. as well. I suck. It does. Yeah. yeah. So, and I could do that to two things. One is, uh, I think maybe eight years ago, we did a science for new seven so to uh, align ourselves better with the national frameworks, the new frameworks for science. Um, and what we found really uh, was at the elementary level, we Less life science 
and more physical science. Mm. So uh, we do a lot more with Newton sports uh, with a steam lab, kids doing hands on pieces. Um, so I think that it's a building over all of the years. So maybe we should take the ACT <laughs> because we're yeah. pretty strong in science. Yeah, interesting. Very northeast. Yeah, isn't it weird? Yeah. That's been forever. Yeah. Uh, advanced placement. Uh, this is right here. <laughs> so the AP exam student scores, I just, I, I pulled up just a couple things that jumped out to me. First off, that 91.1% of the students that take this score of three, four, or five on this. It's extraordinary. Like, mm -hmm. they, pass. Uh, they, they pass, pass, yeah. Um, and pass well. And pass well. Um, so this, our AP classes are certainly preparing the students well for the exam. That said, um, they take, there's 25, 26 different AP tests that are taken. And I did know that last spring, 150 of those tests were in subjects that we don't have courses. Mm -hmm. yeah. again, they were in the arts, they were in the English, they were in different social science. Um, and so our students are taking you know, our regular uh, classes and choosing to maybe study a little more on the side and take the test in their system. We may not label it if you know there's a lot of students being taught at that program. I also thought this number of AP tests speaking for students testing. Um, when you look at the fact that that 62% of our students taking more than one. So, you get right down to a few grades of the system. Yeah, that number concerns us. Mm -hmm. uh, it was still pretty impressive. That's how we get there. So, in summary, we saw the profound loss um, that everybody did from um, 2019 to 2022. Um, we saw it, you know, in marginalized student populations, historically like marginalized student populations um, here in Concord and across the state and across the nation. Um, as I said, younger students were more impacted. Um, you can see this particularly in the area of electronic arts. Um, and uh, although we saw the impact of the um, pandemic here in Congress, we didn't see it as, down, as at the state level. Uh, and we really, you know, I want to pay kudos to you, the school committee, also obviously our administration and our teachers, um, because a lot of this, I think, was having to do with the fact that we came back in person learning. We know from our data that uh, in-person learning was more effective than Zoom or hybrid learning. Um, and we came back in September and some of our other uh, districts, similar districts, did not come back that early. So we're really excited because we really see this bounce back. I think I showed you with the star data um, for, from last spring so we got it for the fall. We've seen a lot of great bounce back. Um, and so we're very good by that. Um, so kudos to everybody for working so hard. Um, in terms of next steps, uh, so we want to continue to look at the trends and patterns that we see in the data. Um, each school has a data team, so they're looking at their specific data. Uh, and then you have now protocol for doing that. So uh, we want to keep doing that. And uh, to determine if there's gaps in uh, students' experience or gaps in curriculum, um, we want to put our student data to make sure that uh, those who put in the partially meeting or not meeting uh, performance level get the interventions that they need. So what we're doing is looking very carefully um, through the MPS process, that remote process is on the board that I described at a, a previous meeting, but. You know, it's not just that a kid is struggling in reading and we're getting that special time on reading. It's that they're struggle, struggling in phonemic awareness within the area of reading. And so we remediate in that area. And we have highly trained staff that are remediating in that area where the kid really has the need 
So we want to continue to do that. We want to continue to use uh, data with teachers to inform their instruction. So even if they don't have an identified feed need, like I just described, what what does this class need more of? Can I do more of in my class? Uh, remember, that was very exciting. Uh, so to make the um, data more accessible for teacher use in the classroom, we are building a new data platform. Gary and I are working with a team of 25 educators to uh, design this data platform to make it um, more powerful for teachers to use the instruction. Um, and then given that, we want to continue to train faculty on what are the most effective methods uh, in curriculum for using the students so that they get the highest improvement that they can. Um, and, you know, we want to be really clear, lastly, on what our grade level benchmarks are. So where should we be, where should we be in that at every certain uh, point along the year? Uh, and how quickly uh, and effectively can we get in there through class and grade and grade level or benchmark to get you up there? And lastly, we really wanted to say thank you to everybody because, um, we wouldn't have been able to not dip as low as everybody else during the pandemic and have a big bounce back that we've had without everyone bringing a day um, in support of our students. Uh, and we especially want to thank our educators, our administrators, and we also want to thank our parents and guardians because I think during the pandemic, they felt like teachers. Uh, the kids were on Zoom with aftermath and math and so forth. So it really took a village. And I think we uh, weathered this pandemic, um, weathered this storm better than most. So thank you. I was not a great pandemic teacher. Seventh grade math was not my friend for some reason. I was I was being challenged by that. Um, does anyone have any questions for Carrie and Kristen first? So very, very clear. Um, the next steps imply uh, work to be done, but you're telling us that actually uh, much of this is uh, in the way of the net. Yeah, and it's a great point because um, I think looking this carefully at the data helps us to pinpoint what could be strategic objectives for our um, new strategic plan. So for example, you saw some of the subgroups. Um, I think we could we could set a goal of having our subgroups match um, our whole student population in the five years. I think that's a reasonable goal and a team. Yeah. Sarah. I mm have -hmm. question about the uh, talk about the year expect to bounce back is going to continue to be pronounced. Uh, from the star assessment in the high school, do you see the similar dip and bounce back? I mean, we've already done the star assessment for this year, right? So I'm wondering for forecast, like if if the star stuff has tracked the young cast stuff and like any sort of not that I, mean, I, I don't like it. I think that for some stuff, if you say, oh, this kind of topic, our students are not doing well, and we focus on that. But I, yeah, I think it should be understood. You guys have so many kinds of data sets and do sort of informal, the most monitor process. So um, I'm just wondering if the star assessment. Yeah, I think it, you mean specifically for the high school? Well, I'm only here for the region, so that's all. Yeah, yeah, so, <laughs> Fair. yeah, so the star data at the high school, I think, bears out the things that we've been talking about here. Um, specifically, we use star to pick up um, students who are at need of okay. intervention. So by ninth grade, which is when you get the star in high school, pretty much we already know about kids who are there and um, our scores are pretty good at the high school level. Um, the pandemic really hurt in reading and math the, the younger kids. Okay. So, so you didn't see, so well, not you saw it at MCAS like in high school, there was some, for now, like, yeah. there were some big shifts, right? But, 
kids. No, like that second, first, that's, second, and third grade in reading, okay. we saw a 12 point difference. You know, mm -hmm. that was huge. Yeah. Not like that. Of no. Oops. No. I have a question. In your next steps on number two, it's just to analyze the grade level and school data to determine if there are gaps in the curriculum. So a couple of things I'd be curious to know if, if you make some determination that that might be the case in some things. Um, one, just personally, I'd be so interested to see that. Um, and then secondarily, what do you then sort of do? I mean, I can't imagine, or maybe you do, like you scrap a curriculum, like how do you then take that information and make it actionable in a way that benefits students that we would see or that we might be able to like help with and have impact with? Are there, you know, fiduciary aspects to that? I don't know. Yeah, no, it's really done at the local level. So uh, I'll use the example of middle school math. Um, during the pandemic, we were meant to teach only the power standards, and there were very few uh, geometry standards in within the power standards. So our teachers put the teaching of geometry after the taking of them. A lot of places did that because um, we didn't think it was really going to be on the test, mm -hmm. but we still knew that we wanted kids to learn geometry. So that's an example where the data is going to say, oh, you're slightly lower in geometry than in the other good parts of math. Um, so that's really something that the teachers do. They'll, you know, switch the order of units, uh, sprinkle more geometry in, for example, which is that they've already done the correction for mm -hmm. this year based on last year's data. I think one thing that I know I answered a lot since the pandemic and returning um, is permission for teachers to not stick with the standard curriculum if they could see kids had skills that needed to be filled first. And I know our consistent message was always, well, you've got to meet the kids where they were at. So teachers have been backfilling. And I think that's some of why we're seeing such progress. Mm -hmm. We didn't just push through a curriculum that's on paper because it's on paper. Teachers really look to see where kids were and use both what they were seeing on a daily basis and the data to slow down and backtrack and fill those gaps as they, as the kids have come up through. So it's great to see we're getting a little more, more on track with what's on paper. So we're back to some of what our standard curricula are, but I can't say enough about what this teaching staff has done to meet kids where they were at a very individual level for the last mm -hmm. two years. Um, really amazing. Um, I told a story from Carla, just went through this, right? I mean, and the, so there are things that, like, two years ago, Carla all back, it's not curriculum entirely in middle school, as a result of, like, because the MCAS scores were not showing where they mm. were supposed to be, right? So, okay, great. But when you guys look at these scores, you also think about the questions that are asked, like, what are the things people are not doing well on? One of the questions that the third graders were asked was to finish a story, and, like, they had to write, first of all, mm. which... It's Did so it go well, right? I don't think <laughs> that's a lot. But they had to finish a story from the perspective of a particular character in like a third grader. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and so that's the kind of thing that like Carla looked at and he's like, uh, you know, like we're just we're not cool. We're actually okay with that. <laughs> <laughs> That performance is okay by us. Yeah. <laughs> You're right, Sarah. That's yeah. that's right. <laughs> Yeah, and asking a lot of people right on the keyboard. Right. Yeah. 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 This is great. I love the level of detail. I, I actually love that it's a, you know, 60 something slide deck because you know what, there's so much in there and, and everybody sees different things in the deck. So I really appreciate having it all. And, you know, obviously we've spent a tremendous amount of work doing this. So we certainly appreciate all that. So thank you. <laughs> Can I ask a couple of questions before we move on? Oh, yeah. Yep. Go ahead. So this is my first time seeing this data like all, all of this. So I spent a trying to understand, I am not the, the data nerd that you and Carrie are. And I really respect 
that you two are. So thank you. Um, I have a couple of just like basic questions. And then I have a couple of like bigger picture questions. Um, my, just like a basic question. Could you explain the accountability score for me? I didn't quite understand what that was. And in particular, um, I'm trying, I, what I'm trying to understand is why it looked like all of the elementary schools and CCHS were like in the high nineties. And then the middle school was in mid seventies. I, I was just trying to understand that. And give us a slide number if you'd be it's, so kind. Oh, I don't remember. Oh, I have it. Fine. Sorry, actually, mine doesn't have slide numbers on it. <laughs> it's like one, two, three, four, five, six, slide six, maybe ish. Six ish. Yeah, it's close to the front. Yeah, it's um, 2022 accountability information. Yeah, and just so um, everybody's aware, the accountability measures used to be really important before 2019, but we have been held harmless right. since the pandemic. So while they're reported, uh, it's not, there's no um, repercussions from them. So um, that's one piece of it. The other piece of it is in the middle school, I'll just remind you we had a technical glitch on mm -hmm. the second day, I think, of the math testing. So some kids were counted as absent um, because they got kicked out of protest. So right. this is part of the federal accountability formulas. So there's a bunch of a number of factors that are weighted into the formula based on that is how you get your score. Carrie, okay. oddly, all this information is also on the DESI school profiles page. So if you a lot of it, not all of it, but a lot of it can be found there, so you can even look back the years. Right. Okay. So it factors uh, in uh, the kid, number of kids who participated, the number of, the, obviously, their performance, and a few other variables that we don't always agree are weighted appropriately. Uh, participation <laughs> being one of them, <laughs> as you can see that we took a significant hit for the way the technical glitch played out. What is the, I, I, you might have mentioned it. What if it's on a score of like it's 99, it's, it's just a percent. So these are yeah. largely good yeah. at 99. Like yeah. The, yeah. this is a good story. Yeah. yeah. Okay. yeah. And then, and then the outlier is the middle school. In then, particular which to the technical glitch. And probably if we weren't held harmless, we'd be appealing to the state about the participation rate, given the technical glitch. We're on okay. record with them about that. Okay. Okay. That, I, that would just seemed like an outlier and I was just trying to understand that. So that makes sense. Um, and I guess my other question is about, um, and I think you've gone into this a little bit, but I'm curious to hear a little bit more about the middle school math numbers and then the middle school math scores. Um, is, are you, is that, that is simply the glitch or are there are other things that you're looking into as to what that might attribute to that? Or is that, what's your thinking there? Yeah, I would say it's three things. One, the most important is the glitch. the glitch. Yeah, because that was out of two days of testing that affected one. So it was about half the time. Mm -hmm. So even with that, pretty amazing. The second um, piece is I mentioned about the teaching of geometry and putting mm -hmm. it after the testing. Because if you dig down in the um, middle school math scores, that's the area that was um, hurt the most. Um, and so that's been also corrected. Um, and then the last I would say is um, when we, I think someone said, let's say, our, when you align um, these scores with the other internal measures that we give, specifically yep. our, um, our kids were actually getting stronger. So, um, you know, I think it's a- Oh, really, that's interesting. Yeah, it's really a great point that, um, that Sarah made about having multiple measures uh, is really important because of something like the technical glitch and how it can and make us look. So if so, you might expect to see some even further rebound mm -hmm. next year. Absolutely. With provided that our internet is <laughs> strong, <laughs> it's incredibly reliable. Uh, usually, but yeah, even in the middle school. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, that's interesting. So that'll be something to watch for. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Cool. and we've seen it as I said already in the star score. So I'm yeah, really so the not- stories are not aligned. Yeah, the star story and the end of that story. Interesting. That's really reassuring. Yeah. And because it does seem like that, you know, dip and then bounce back has been, you know, pretty consistent, you know, throughout K through five and then through, in CCHS and the middle school is really just middle school math, even um, the outlier. So that was not a fun day at the middle school. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that, that makes a lot of sense. Thank you. Those are my questions. Right. Mm-hmm. It wasn't in my link to thank you. Also, thank you. In some of the average sales store data, some of the sub information in there is that the privacy reasons. Yeah. Yeah. So um, sometimes. Uh, Department doesn't report it if it has juice lower than 20 or 10, depending on what it is. Um, and sometimes, uh, even when they report the future, it's not the slides because they're talking about bottle kids or green kids. So they don't report it for SGP subgroups and at 20. And then it, for some reason, they change the number to 10 at the achievement level, proficient <laughs> subgroups. I could I don't know why they so like this slide. Uh, why it's ten in one place and twenty in another. Any group under ten, there's no score given. And under mm. with a number of less than ten. They Actually, so SGP is twenty. Right. Yeah. This Performance is, uh, this is ten. Composite scale score, and then the SGP yeah, yeah. Yeah. is in group one. And why is a mystery? Why would have it be different? I thought I'm classic. Doesn't it? Mm. But they're all. But, Mm-hmm. All right. Well, thank, thank you, you so much. This Thanks for joining us. Yep. Yeah, nice yes, there. and feel free to stay, but also we're not offended if you leave. <laughs> <laughs> I have to just say that. Um, okay. And Carrie, I did see her also in the Instagram and the Steam Labs. That was exciting too. Yeah, middle for school middle school. school. Like, I mean, that's fantastic. Fifth and sixth graders in the Steam right. once this year. And that's great. It was fantastic. That's yeah. great. Thank so you. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> Thanks so much. Hey, thank you. All right. And now we're on to advertising on the CCHS campus. So I will just bring us all back to date uh, with any new information. I have reached out to Robin Grace, who is part of the Tennis Booster Club, and Steve Sores, who is part of the Baseball Booster Club, to just get a little bit relevant background, because I think we had a few other questions last week. So I can hopefully fill in any blanks for anyone. Um, and I will start with, I'm going to start with tennis. Let me just pull this up for one second. Cause I have to reference my email. Um, so in terms of the tennis scoreboard, um, and I'm just going to read right from Robin's email. We confirmed a $5,000 donation with a five-year commitment by McWalter volunteer insurance agency. And there is a proof that I believe you all should have of the tennis scoreboard. The scoreboard is sitting in a warehouse waiting to be installed. Aaron's been working to coordinate the install with Lyman and company. And we hope that the cement and install will be done over the next two weeks because of course the ground is freezing. So we did approve, uh, last December, the scoreboard. And we told them to go and fundraise and find the rest of your money. And we sent them on the merry way. So we did that. And now um, they have an actual sponsor. So we just really need to go through the process of approving that. So that would be tennis. Baseball. I actually got a a slideshow, Um, but, but not everything is completely relevant. So the sign predates uh, Aaron Jonkis. It predates Mark Hernandez, who's the varsity baseball coach, and also predates Larry Hunter. So around 2015 or 2016, Acton Toyota had the sign. So last year, they went back to Acton Toyota, and they actually asked for more money. And they weren't willing to give more money, so they went out and they found another sponsor. 
So the sponsor for the CCHS baseball sign, and this is again, a parent organization that there was a sign there. So they were simply thought they were going to replace it. They want to make some money for the program and replace it. And so that was replaced by Route 2 Athletics, which is actually an organization that works with Concord Youth Baseball. So a lot of our kids participate in Route 2 Athletics. So it seemed like an appropriate sponsor for the baseball scoreboard. And last year, or this year, I should say, they are the money they raised from that was for... Uh, it, it wasn't for all of these things, but they did fundraise. I'll tell you what they fundraised for baseballs, batting helmets, a new pitching machine, pitching and field safety screens, off season clinics for players, off season conditioning and weight training, outfield fence repair and installation stipends for assistant coaches. So both of these booster clubs are doing significant fundraising for their teams because the budget does not cover the costs of the sports program. So that's really just what it comes down to. Would you agree? <laughs> Covers a lot of the costs, but it doesn't cover them all. Um, So the, so that is the baseball scoreboard and the tennis scoreboard. So in addition to that, I feel an obligation to let the athletic director know, the coaches know, the booster clubs know what our policy is. Cause I do think this was just a simple, uh, I don't think anyone knew they needed to come to us for approval. So I would like to tighten that up and send a copy of our policy along with, I'm just going to scroll down um, on yours because it's pulled up here Um, along with specifically what we do for temporary advertising. And to remind everybody, if it's temporary, it can be hung during the event or the season, whenever it needs to be hung. And the the one part that we also do need to clean up is that if parents hang up a sign, parents should be taking the sign down. It should not be the responsibility of our staff to do that. So, and, and it usually does lie within the staff because I think this summer, Aaron did remove all the signage mm-hmm. and we definitely don't want that to happen because it our policy states, it should not be school personnel doing it. So this is attached. So we attached the memo. I mean, the memo, geez. the agenda. Yeah. Um, we took a. It's not it's actually in the agenda. I don't no, it is. It. Is it That's already on I there? Hold it up. Yes. Oh, it oh, it's already in there. Okay. Um, most so Aaron attached one. the most recent agenda that is on like our school committee website. Um, I took a quick stab literally yesterday morning, yes. this morning. I don't remember when. At pulling together a letter um, from us that could be used to these and sent to these athletic uh, coaches, boosters groups um, that just sort of says, you know, welcome to your season. If you're gonna pursue sponsorship opportunities, um, you need to keep abreast of our policy, policies included. And then as as Tracy said, we have two types of advertising, temporary and permanent. If you're gonna do temporary advertising, here's what you're responsible for. And if you are interested in having some sort of permanent advertising, here is sort of the order of operations to get that done so that this can be used. Um, so when it has to even, what do we define as temporary? Temporary like vinyl banners. So all those vinyl banners. So what's yep. the duration? The duration? It's, um, not it's not defined. It says at the conclusion of the event. I don't think that is our policy. Our policy? Let me yeah. just read it. So I think like I can find, I was coming through the minutes to try to find them voting to uh, approve the uh, scoreboard. And I did find a um, motion for approving temporary out of baseball. And they said it must be temporary. You have to have temporary written on it all over the place. Can you, where where did you find that? Sorry. Okay, if you could set a set in 2016. So temporary is something that's removable. It says in our policy, it says temporary advertising of commercial products, services, or logos will be permitted on a limited basis during the time of and just prior to a sporting event or during the time of or just prior to a club activity. So, so that's trying the to event. Yeah. Not yeah. Material yeah, yeah. Yeah. So uh, specifically the vinyl... Um, Banners that go, I think, on the baseball fence during the baseball season. And those are hung for the whole season. Right, and the school committee used to put those here. Same with the softball. So we haven't approved them since probably 2016. I know, and that's because we haven't had a lot of change. Right. 
So I think we need to, I don't feel comfortable just like being very open-ended about what's temporary and what's permanent. Well, I, I look at temporary as removable. Permanent, you need to remove with tools, et cetera. I mean, I, I do look at temporary as no, we, we it's final. That's my opinion. I, I, I prefer no advertising on the campus. That's my I think it just could get out of hand. And I don't even really know now how we're going to say no, even another permanent um, request. Because we granted, we did vote yes to grant these two. Well, it's definitely something that we're going to have to vote on. Um, we can grant exception to advertising. Um, and I do think that our sports programs do rely on some of this advertising and it is for the benefit of kids in the program. And so, you know, we're, the people that are advertising are typically local places or they are related to the sport. You know, we don't have, you know, app computer coming in to advertise. I don't think it looks like that. And the advertising on that baseball fence, in my opinion, it is for the betterment of the baseball and softball programs to fund some of those assistant coaches. So the only people that, re I mean, the people at the game see it and certainly people walking through the campus might see it, but I deem it as being part of what the program needs to really run effectively. Hey, Terry, you had mentioned possibly looking at, at these fall at this policy and, and making some, I mean, I think I'm looking yeah. at experience as a, a big learning lesson, right? Like I'm starting to ask, but like, if I have a question with the stuff that the booster clubs raise, like, are we supposed to accept those as gifts? It's like, no, they pay no. directly. So you, you're not directly involved. We don't man, we don't have any insight to their money and how they spend. No. Um, the difference, they become possessed of possessions of the school or like, or if they're paying for an assistant coach who gets paid through the school. I'm just, I mean, this is, we can look at it. We can look at it, but I mean, I'm, I'll just tell you my experience, you know, as being part of a booster club is they have their own bank accounts and then they do their payments to assistant coaches and they're 5013C3. So they are all, yeah, are, they're not fundraising off of that. Profit. That's the big difference. That's right. a huge difference in my mind. There's, we're, we're selling a spot on our campus. Well, and, and I, I guess my but opinion is, yeah, we can, can talk about it, but I don't think it's clear. But we do need to vote on these right now because well, we need to deliberate first. We did that last um, time, I think. Well, oh, yeah, deliberating now. now. Yeah, yeah. As well. We want to get this right. People have referred to previous actions as vague or even omissions. So we're trying to clean this up. I don't think anybody disputes the idea that we are trying to serve the needs of kids. Uh, but not every advertiser that we have had up on the school property and since removed have been local firms. We have national firms. Mm -hmm. U.S. Bank, Merrill Lynch, and so on. So it's not quite as easy as, as we might be suggesting. I have great reservations about a letter that goes out interpreting our policy if we don't even agree on what our policy means. Policy is policy. And if we can't agree on what temporary means, does temporary mean it's on a piece of paper or a piece of plastic? Some people say so. What does it mean length of time? Some people say so. So if we have to deliver, deliberate, let's deliver. Okay. Well, let's let's clean this up. I don't know. And I think I we'll do that, that in our policy. policy. Let's just go to because you say these these signs, for example, right? They have they are permanent in the sense that they can't right. Like the the sign that has the route to athletics, right? If you were to in five years, if there was a new sponsor to come around, right, you would take that. We're talking about commitments, like of five yeah. years, which is different again than permits, yeah. right? This isn't in perfect, like it's not that that sign is right be there. Like, right. Yeah. Right. Five, right. Five right. Years. Not only right. you can have the temporary, you don't know what permanent yeah, yeah, yeah. is. Right. Right. And so that's fixed. Like Sorry. Yeah. Fixed. So we'll this whole treat thing this. Brought up so yeah. many questions about so many issues that we're not going to I me personally myself we're not going to figure it all out tonight right we have two groups who have raised money uh you know are are working we know that the tennis scoreboard for example we can have 
I think tournaments that we couldn't have before, right? Opportunities, opening up opportunities that we bring to athletics, these opportunities for our students and all that kind of stuff. Great. We're here where we are. Mm-hmm. But I, I do think it's brought up, at least for me, a bunch of questions about like what's temporary, what's permanent, yeah. and like and and what and then and like how the donations came in for this board brought up questions because that one they didn't have their own serve, right? They, they, they were just dropping checks off in the business office. And so, no, the tennis scoreboard, board, they do have a 501 yeah, 3C that they use. Now they do. The yes. Or yes. Just dropping checks off in yeah. the business office. Mm-hmm. Right. Like, so, this whole, I'm just saying, this whole process has brought up a bunch of things that we just need to clean up, I think. Right. And this is, Carrie, this is it's on our next again. policy yeah. meeting. Sorry, I've had my hand up, but I realize you can't see me. Sorry. Um, Sorry. <laughs> uh, so I have a, cu- a couple thoughts on this. I, this is definitely on our agenda. And um, mo- like there are multiple changes that MASC is recommending around advertising. So I think, I think court and I, Cynthia are right that we need to deliberate this. I just wonder if we can like decouple the tennis and the baseball situations from the broader issue and, and hold off until we have Dorothy and also um, like a broader kind of communications with the community. I, I mean, that's what all what K is. So um, we'll have a conversation about what all of those looks like, including advertising at our next policy meeting. I don't know if that's possible, but that's just my, my question. And the other thing, the other comment I would make is on this letter. Um, I think the letter is like, is perfectly fine. I would just ask that we not, Re- reiterate any policy that we're likely going to be updating. No, right. right. And this I wouldn't just suggest a draft. if yeah. we're going to read yeah. the yeah. policy. Yeah, I know it's a draft, but like maybe just wait until we have a new oh, a new policy 100%. and then yeah. push it out. Yeah. 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 And I think I think for tonight's purposes, I think this is sort of what Sarah's saying. Like we need to, you know, make this the vote on these two specific baseball and tennis based on the policy we have today and work towards to court's point cleaning up the policy at the next meeting no. of the policy subcommittee no yeah. this has to be done uh, tonight if in fact we want to clean up the policy and perhaps make uh, uh, exceptions to it which is already embedded in the policy our prerogative our responsibility to decide when exceptions get made um if if for six years we've been uh, uh, letting things happen, uh, as, as a matter of fact, uh, what's the harm of letting them continue to happen for another couple of months and, and uh, get this done properly? Well, what's 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 the urgency? Well, because tennis it's been going on for six years. I understand that. So tennis is very concerned that they can't get their scoreboard in because now they think that we are not going to approve it, and they have a commitment with a sponsor. And when we first approved the scoreboard, it said, I'm not going to remember what it said exactly it's in our court, proof. It's a court dedication. Court dedication is what it said at the bottom, which, which, well, we didn't ask either. We didn't and ask, we said, go I, right I ahead. Dedication as like, thank you, Mr. Spence, for being, you know, a great Well, so, so I will say what Robin Grace has said is that she's made that commitment so far. And that was the, and we told her, go out and fundraise for the rest of it, right? So I do think that on the tennis score, but in particular, we, we have to vote that because that is going to be installed. And how do they install it without us approving it? And specifically, they're seeking a five-year commitment for an advertisement for the Walton Insurance, and their stated intent is to contribute five thousand dollars of those Walton proceeds mm-hmm. toward our athletic-specific expenses. Would that be correct? It's the five thousand is to f- complete the scoreboard tennis. It is for the remainder of the scoreboard. It's very specific. Sorry, can you give me all of that again. Tennis is for the remainder of the scoreboard. The $5,000 was to finish out the rest of the funds they needed to complete the scoreboard. Yeah. Do you remember they had all that? They had extra funds from their pickleball Pickleball. tournament, but that I think was like 30, well, maybe it was like 35,000 or something. The scoreboard was going to cost 41, I think. And so they needed $6,000. So this is how they did with our first pickleball tournament, we anticipate that when we do our next pickleball tournament, we will yeah. easily bring in that remaining yeah. $6,000. And then something yeah. changed. From, so they got 1000 They got 1000 from the pickleball tournament. Right. And 
and sought and that needed a sponsor, I guess. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So what then would a motion sound like that captured these necessary details and made this uh, something that qualified as an exception so it doesn't uh, uh, drive further policy uh, with reverse engineering? What would it sound like? What are, what are the details? What would be, what would be approved? I'm not opposed to it. I think we uh, backed ourselves into this corner. I just don't want to have it create additional problems. Well, I would entertain a motion to uh, approve the tennis scoreboard with McWalter Insurance as the sponsor on it as an exception to our policy KHB. Do we have to put in the amount and the time period? Like the, you know, the sure. Wow. We can. I don't think we have to. Sure. Looks like that the is that like is that a spot that's sellable again in five years? Can yes. Swap out that. So it is a name plate. So so there are two plates that go on the scoreboard. The first, the so scoreboard is lit. Yeah, it's a slideable plate. So in five years, that plate comes out. Or if we follow the Nemesis path, if we find the higher bid. You it'll never be know. digital and it'll it, circulate. Right. So that yeah. is not digitized. <laughs> and then in tr- and, and then I guess I would. I would also say in terms of baseball, it is it that was already committed. Yeah. That money was already committed, which is why I would like to approve both of these tonight. And I just want to clarify, you do approve all the equipment that's come through or any repairs. I think the one place we're going to need to figure out clarity is the assistant coach stipends. Everything else you've seen. So right. the base, you've seen the re- work they've done to improve the field. You've seen... Yeah, so yes. football just oh, did helmets. We yeah. took a donation yeah. from so football. I, yep. Just wanted to be sure I said that clearly. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you see all those. I think that was the, that was the question. Yeah, the intent is you see all those. Yeah. It's the assistant coach stipends that's probably the yeah. trickier one we yeah. haven't that's figured. Yeah. Producers don't realize, right? right? It's like, oh, they need, you know, Chin pads. So everybody chip in five bucks for chin pads, and they just give them out. And I don't think anybody thinks nobody's alone. You know. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. More so, communication and yeah. process. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. So, do we have someone willing to move the motion or to make uh, a with, clean with up the, motion? Go okay, ahead. So it would be. I, I can't. We have to start with make a motion to make an exception to our policy, right? And approve, what do you, is it a, again, it's a permanent, temporary permanent, mm-hmm. <laughs> approve, approve advertising for McWalter Insurance for a five-year mm-hmm. term, mm-hmm. a five-year yep. commitment for $5,000 mm-hmm. uh, for the premise for board that is to be installed. Imminent. Imminent. Yeah, put the terms right in it. I mm-hmm. Is that five years from installation? Oh, yeah, yeah with an expiration. Like yeah, we like, should put an expiration. Like the term of commitment should expire. And then... We need to find out. Uh, we would need to find out the exact time that. But for now, we just say. Uh, to the terms agreed upon by McWalter and the Friends of Tennis. Oh, say five years. Five years, oh, five yeah. years yeah. from installation. installation. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I think that's that's when their that's advertising fine. really starts. Yeah, 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 exactly. From when it goes on, it's five years from then. Okay. Do we have a second? I'm to make it yes. Easy for future school committees. Yes. So I, I appreciate that. I mean, I on our searchable I drive. I, yeah. <laughs> I know. It's yes. Yeah. Was that a motion? That was a motion. Sure. Do we have? Thank I you. Just the reason. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Any further discussion? Yeah, I think uh, we should send a message, uh, as I'm sure the chairs will, but uh, we would ask all the boosters to um, uh, understand that we're trying to support kids while uh, adhering to policy, and uh, there's nothing more to it. Mm -hmm. Yep. And we're appreciative. And I will um, send a message back to Robin Grace, who is, and she would have been here tonight, but her kids are home and she's picking up at the airport, et cetera. Same with Steve. So it's, uh, so thank you to the tennis boosters. Right. All right. 
No further discussion. So let's take a vote and we must vote by roll call. So this is just for tennis. This is just for tennis. And this is not one that anticipates any follow up around assistant coaches. That would no. be the baseball side. Okay. Uh, okay. Yes. Thank you. Well, yeah. And I don't know that you want to hold up the vote on that. No. Uh, no. Because baseball, he specifically, clear, yeah. Whether we've really closed this chapter. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And I have given you a laundry list of baseball, but really it was to fund the, if he's reporting annually, it was for the pitching machine. Okay. So roll call, please. Anderson abstain. Who's I? Morano, I. Rank and I. Wilson, I. Okay, thank you. And then on to baseball. So we are going to make it, Sarah, I'm going to ask you if you'd be prepared to, to make a motion on the baseball scoreboard. I make a motion. Uh, two hours, eight advertisement for the first policy and authorize. Um, Route two athletics. Two athletics uh, advertisement for its current also five, five years, years and it from the date from the date of installation, exactly. which was in uh, on April, I believe, sixteenth of twenty twenty two. So okay. it started April. Is when it got hung. Okay. I thought it was nope, okay. just this past April. Okay. Yep. Uh, for forty five hundred dollars. Yep. That's okay. Awesome. All right. And again, thank you to friends of baseball and any other discussion about baseball. We know we'll get a bit of a follow up so we have context on coaching. Uh yeah, but this funding was for the pitching machine, not coaching. I, I don't. I I'm not sure that we'll do some. Homework. Okay, we'll, we'll do a little homework, we'll do some on, homework that. on that. Yeah. Okay. Stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anderson, I, I. Uh, this is region. This is yeah. region. I say for the yep. region. I for region. Okay. Marana, I. Region. I for region. Rankin, I for region. Uh, with I for region. Okay, thank you very much. If I may, I know it's a little bit late technically, but are you a full on Okay. Thank you. you. It's not digitized thank and you. it's not it's <laughs> not worth 30 grand, but <laughs> you'll take it. <laughs> just to recap, we are not sending anything. Oh god, no, no, no until no. we clean up the policy. No, we clean up the policy first. We already jammed it. So it wasn't yeah. in our <laughs> exactly sure pretty much our, yeah. yeah 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 the draft we can take it out yeah no, no, or I can put draft just write There's some typos right. in it too I yeah. <laughs> yeah yes yeah. yeah and I'm I'm sure that Erin is definitely listening and she does such a good job at, at minutes that she'll put that in there yeah. okay yeah. yes yeah. just rewind again a few times she gets to live your meetings a couple of times thank, and Lucky thank you to Erin I'll just thank her publicly again um okay on to the last thing that we have tonight is the vote to approve the out-of-state day trips for uh two basketball tournaments there in Rhode Island and this came to you um, you know, just this week, but yeah, Aaron Jonkos approached me yesterday. Um, they're trying to fill out the basketball schedule, which sometimes has a little flurry here at the end. Uh, this is, is probably the simplest thing. It's not a, an overnight trip. It's literally go to Rhode Island and come back, play ball. Um, they can go to the other side of Massachusetts and you wouldn't have to approve it, but it's like they do to have to go to Rhode Island. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yes, yes. So we're just hoping for an approval tonight, if you're willing. I'll make a motion that Congress Carlisle School Committee votes to approve CCA Chess Board for basketball team day trips on December 2nd to 10th, 2022 to Warwick and North Kingston, Rhode Island to basketball tournament. Second. All right, any discussion? Yeah, just to kind of picky technical, are we approving one or two tournaments here? It's a trip each day. The tenth is to Warwick and the eleventh is to North Kingston. Right. Okay. I know. I know. I know that part. I was just curious. There was reference to there being two tournaments and then language that refers to <laughs> two venues. Two venues. That's my like take. Venues. Two venues. Same, same tournament. Same tournament. Yeah. All right. So. Okay. 
Good. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck to the basketball team. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. All in favor, roll call, please. Anderson, aye. Who's aye? Morano, aye. Rainy, aye. Rankin, aye. Aye. All right. And that. Well. Yes. Thank you. Um, that's all we have. So awesome. happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Yes, happy Thanksgiving. We I hope you don't have to travel that far. We do, we, we do have to adjourn. I know. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Um, so uh, I didn't, Nick, motion, to motion to adjourn. And we have to by roll call. No, we, no, we don't we? We just turn match up. I think I just had a roll call. Okay, that? perfect. All right. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. <laughs> happy Thanksgiving. Carrie, enjoy your trip. Bye, everybody. Bye, Carrie. Bye. Happy Thanksgiving. Bye, Aisha. I know you're with us still in the car. <laughs>